us down now for a fun fact of the day. Brought to you this morning by Don's Easy Pay. In our studio this morning, somebody who, uh, well, I guess once upon a time, uh, he was a non-traditional student. He became a student ambassador. Now he works for us. He is Dennis Guzman of UA Casa. How you doing, Dennis? I'm doing good. How are you? Doing wonderful. Doing wonderful. Dennis, uh, tell us what you're doing this semester at UA Casa time. Yeah, so um, we're we're doing a lot of great things uh, for one for with the Center for Student Success, but also with student ambassadors. Mm -hmm. I once was a student ambassador last semester, once upon a time, but they were like, you know what, you're 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 not fit to be a student ambassador. So <laughs> we'll do you one better. We'll make you a sponsor of the student ambassador. So I was like, you know what, I'll take that deal. Well, you know, one thing I like about Dennis is the fact that. Uh, uh, to him, it's not just a job. I mean, he, he puts his, his heart and soul into it. He, I, I mean, he, he, he puts a lot out there. I really try. And really and really that's try. that's what makes it work. Yeah. I mean, you have to be passionate about it. Yeah. You know, I started with the last semester when I was here talking to you promoting student ambassador events. Mm -hmm. I was working for the ERC, mm -hmm. you mm -hmm. know, and now I've, through the grace of God and, and, and a ton of luck, uh -huh. you know, and a lot of people along the way helping me, I was able to get, you know, hired here full full time and now I'm working for the Center for Student Success and I'm loving it. And my job here with the Center for Student Success is to help our students um, any way that we can. We have a food pantry that we, we run here. We have uh, three of them in, on all three campuses, Ashdown, Bee Queen, and here in Nashville. Um, I'm based here in, in Nashville. Um, we have Erica Buenrostro and Alyssa Cook in B Queen, and we have Alyssa Cook and um, Julie Cliff in Ashdown. Mm -hmm. And then you have me here in, in Nashville. <laughs> so we provide um, food pantry items for our students. Um, it's a tough time for a lot of students. You oh, know? yeah. COVID really messed up a lot of things, and, and people lost their jobs or they got hours cut or whatnot, you know. A lot of students are coming here, um, you know, being single parents, and they're they're struggling. It's a tough times for everybody, and so we decided, you know, well, what better way to help our students than by being able to offer them something, you know, uh, through the food pantry. So we offer food to any student that comes in here. Um, we have hygiene products as well. Mm -hmm. um, we have school supplies like pens and paper and notebooks and all that. Um, <clears throat> and we also have these handy dandy cult cards um, that we give out to our students every once a week uh -huh. um, at the Ash, at the Bee Queen and Nashville campus since we have cafes here. Uh -huh. And um, so a student can come every week, get one of those cards, and then you can use it to get a hot meal at the cafe. In Ashdown, unfortunately, we don't have uh, a cafe there, mm -hmm. but um, Julie Clift and Alyssa Cook were were smart enough to talk to the people at Brookshire's and, and they partnered up and now they have gift cards that they're giving out to the students so that they can go and get a hot meal from there or groceries if they need it. So we try to help any way that we can. Um, that's our main focus is, is our students because without our students, this school, you know, it's not gonna run. And we need our students to come here. We need them to get educated so that they can go out and, and if we can go and, and, and spread a little bit of positivity, you know, that, we hope that that passes on to other students as well, and out into the world whenever they graduate. I know I was in uh, in Nashville on on Wednesday and uh, had three uh, young people come by looking looking for Colts Bucks cards. Yeah. I mean, it's something very much in demand. It's there's certainly a need. And you mentioned the fact that Brookshire's uh, we were able to team up with Brookshire's mm -hmm. in Nashville. And they've been a wonderful partner yes. with UA Casa Todd oh, and yeah. the community oh, yeah. down there for a number of years. But. Yep. Uh, there have also been donations made by individuals mm -hmm. uh, to the food pantry, whether you're talking about money or freezers. I mean, there have been a number of civic yes. clubs that have donated yeah. freezers and things like that. So yep. uh, it takes it takes a community to make this work. It really does. And it, it really just does. feels good that we've got somebody, uh, you know, heading it up that's, uh, that's you know, kind of overseeing things and making yeah. sure that, that uh, you know, things are happening like they're supposed to. Yeah, we have a good team working working around us right now, and, and we all work our or do our best to work together and, and try to help our students. I mean, it takes a team, like you said, to be able to do this, and, and I can't do this alone. Like, Erica is a great great mentor. She's a great boss. You have Alyssa Cook. You have Julie Cliff. So it, it takes a team to be able to do this, and so anything that we can do to help our students, and, you know, um, we, we try. Well, just simply ask when you uh, you come to UA Casa Todd, ask about about our food pantries and, and ask about the services that are offered, and uh, we'll certainly get you hooked up. Yeah, definitely. All right. Well, Dennis, thanks uh, thanks for all you do. Keep up the good work, my Appreciate friend. It. Thank you. And that is our fun fact of the day brought to you this morning by Don's Easy Pay here on Ed 88.
Casa Tot Colts merchandise is now available at the ERCs in DeQueen, Ashdown, and Nashville. Come on in and let our friendly staff show you around. We have a lot to choose from, including t-shirts in a variety of styles, colors, caps, hoodies, polos, long sleeve t-shirts. We have joggers and stuff like coffee mugs and insulated thermal tumblers, as well as flash drives, lanyards, and power bank chargers. Just let the staff know what you need, and who knows, they might even model it for you. Show your Casa Tot school spirit. Get your Colts merchandise today at an ERC near you. Safety is a factor that shouldn't be overlooked when it comes to your car. Your vehicle needs safe engine parts or brake pads, but it also requires a reliable set of tires. Discount Tire and Alignment has a large selection of automotive tires that fit any car, truck, or SUV. They'll provide a safe and comfortable experience on the road whether you're driving a short distance or for hours on the highway. It's smartness all around. Find everything from all season to specialty tires, oil changes, alignments, a clean facility, and friendly customer service. Discount Tire and Alignment, Highway 71 North in Queen, 870-642-5100. At Diana's Clothing and Gifts on Culinary Drive in the Queen, shop a fantastic selection of women's fashion apparel. Keep your style fresh with the latest trendy tops, jeans, and dresses, plus lots of new arrivals. Let Diana's help you with your home decorating needs. Make your home even more personal with our assortment of home decor and decorative accessories. And discover our collection of gifts for that special person in your life. There are gifts for every occasion. It's a great family-owned business. People come from all over to visit Diana's. Stay updated with the new stuff on their Facebook page. Located at 804 West Colinry Drive in DeQueen, Diana's Clothing and Gifts, 870-642-6528. If you're ordering McDonald's and your friend says they don't want fries, get them the fries. Or else your fries will be their fries. Ba -da -ba -ba -ba. Don's Easy Pay has been serving families in Southwest Arkansas and Southeast Oklahoma for over 30 years. Don's Easy Pay is a family owned business. They carry name brand home furnishings for every room in the house living room, dining room, bedroom furniture, name brand kitchen appliances, and electronics too. At Don's Easy Pay, you can rent to own or purchase on the spot with 120 days same as cash. 
At Don's Easy Pay, you can even rent to own tires. And at Don's Easy Pay, they deliver, taking time to take care of our customers. It's Don's Easy Pay. Fender Bender? Been bumped in the parking lot? Hit a deer? Well, the body shop at Queen Auto Group is known for their quality work. PJ Miner and his crew of certified auto technicians have the equipment and the know-how to get you back on the road good as new. At the body shop at Queen Auto Group, not only do they do the work right, but they take great pride in getting your vehicle in and out of the shop as soon as possible. Cars, pickups, vans, SUVs, you name it, they can fix it. And they work with your insurance company too. So, getting your vehicle fixed is a very smooth process. Open weekdays from 8 to 5, it's The Body Shop at the Queen Auto Group. It's in the smallest details. The answer. How is Husqvarna chainsaw durable and at the same time lightweight? And how can a XP chainsaw from Husqvarna help you work both faster and safer? It's in all those small, engineered details. Husqvarna, ready when you are. Raising a family today costs just slightly less than the national debt. There's braces, music lessons, clothes, groceries, doctor bills, insurance, cars, college, and the expenses just grow as the kids get older. It takes a good banking relationship with a bank that's small enough to know you and your banking needs, yet big enough to serve them. We've helped a lot of folks with the financial side of raising a family. First State Bank, member FDIC. We're big on you. We're big on you.
starting one up for the uh, respective teams and we're set to get underway. Conference actions. Ricker Bank of Oxford gets to the gymnasium. Glad you're taking us with you today. We may talk about basketball before on today by our good friends at McDonald's, by Hus Rogers, and by folks at Coca-Cola. start for Meliana Williams. Williams hits the three. Lady Colts on down uh, behind right now by a score of 3-0. 9.35 to play. We're just underway here in the first quarter. Pass down low intended for the uh, Lady Colts. Leah Morton. Good flat come up with it. The pass goes out of bounds. Last touch by the Lady Colts. Last touch by the Lady Greyhounds. Shot put up on the baseline. That's an Asia Jefferson shot. Won't go to rebound. Picked up by the Lady Greyhounds. I'll fire it down towards. In traffic, shot put up and in. I believe that was Jayla Reed. Reed with a basket. Lady Colts trail at 5 zip. Out on the wing. Fuller drives inside. Big collision inside. Ran into Lee. And Lee got the better of that one as Fuller knocked back a step. Lost control of the ball, goes out of bounds. And the Lady Greyhounds have it back. Leading 5-zip, early going here in Locksburg. Lady Greyhounds work it down low to Lee. Takes off on the baseline, tying her up down there, but a whistle and a foul. And that is going to be on Kyle Hardy. Hardy calls the first one foul. Good to see Hardy back, back to one of the that injury in the first half. Five nothing, eight forty-eight remaining in the first quarter. Double set of Saturday here in Lawrence. Oh, won't go, and the rebound's going to be pulled down by Asia Jefferson. She'll clear it out to Scott, and here comes the Lady Colts. Morton going to get it left side and get deep in that corner, picking up that loose basketball from Michaela Scott. Gets it back over to Morton. Aaliyah drives through the lane. Oh, nice give underneath. Shot put right up and in by Kyler Hardy. Hardy gets the basket. Give the assist to Aaliyah Morton. And you got that on the court. Our score finished out five. Lady Colts two. 829 to go in the first quarter. Back in the morning on NAD Premier County Farmers Co-op in Dequeen has cattle panels, fencing, water troughs, feed bins, culverts, you name it. At the feed store, find cattle feed, horse feed, goat, swine, rabbit, and pet feeds. The co-op is the area's pure arena dealer. 
Staff on hand has built a reputation through the years of having what farmers and ranchers need when they need it. It's all at the co-op. They even have deer feed to help you draw in that big buck. At the co-op service station, they'll fix you up with car and truck tires, tractor tires. They fix flats and do oil changes. Plus, they're a full service station. Neighbors working with neighbors to make our corner of the world a better place. to Lee, tries to fire it, left side, three-pointer on the way, in and out, in and out, and comes off to Kyler Hardy. Hardy grabs the rebound, here come the Lady Colts. Crossing the horsey head, now they get it down low, and Lee is going to be called for the personal foul. She was battling down there with Kyler Hardy and the Lady Colts. Lee call for the personal foul, inbounds pass, goes into Michaela Scott in traffic, loose ball on the court, and it's a two on nobody for the Lady Greyhounds. They work it quickly down the court, shot put up and in. Basketball locked it, and the Lady Colts have a basketball as we're tied at seven. They work it deep in the right corner, Scott with it. And gets it out on the wing to Hardy. Hardy drives hard to the basket, puts it up in the air. Kyler Hardy taking it right where she left off in the first half the other night down in Dallas. Even the Lady Colts top score in that ball game when she checked out with that injury. 9-7, Colts on top. Lady Greyhounds work at the corner. Three-pointer on the way, up and in. Three-pointer put up and in by Jayla Reed. She got five points in the ball game. Lady Colts trail 10-9. Ray Costa double team down front. That's Aaliyah Morton. Lily works it right side. They'll get it out to Fuller. Fuller right on the three-point line. Can't get it to go down though. And the rebound's going to be chased down by Delaney. Delaney left side inside the arc shot on the way won't go. Good block out that time by Hardy. She grabs the rebound. Tyler works the head. Julia Morton. Julia Morton. And let's see if travel's going to be called. Jefferson. Uh, drug that. Uh, if, if, excuse me. Double team down low, and they'll uh, get it out of there. They get it 
it back out to Reed. Out to Delaney. Tries to attack, drives to the lane. And then we're going to have a blocking foul call against. That's going to be on Hardy. That's going to be uh, Caleb's second personal brand. Morrison, who just checked in a moment ago, couldn't get that shot to go, and Hardy's going to be called for the first foul on the rebound. Yeah, that's going to be Kyler's second. And Hardy's going to get a breather here. Jefferson checked in. So Morrison, Jefferson, along with Scott. Ashley Starks and Kayla Fuller. Starks, Morrison, recently checking into the ball game. Driving inside the lane, the one-hander, floating one-hander up and good. That's Lockett with the basket. Ellen Davia, four points in the ball game. Lady Colts trail by three at 12-9. Fuller, facing some pressure. Gets it deep in that left corner. Scott was left alone, goes around the defender, puts it up, can't get it to go. And the rebound, <laughs> I tell you, Fuller worked hard to come up with it, just couldn't quite make that play. And the... Uh, Lady Greyhounds will have the basketball. They lead it 12 9. They'll dump it inside. Working down low. Back out, right side. Three pointer on the way. No good. The rebound's going to come off to Jefferson. Amnesia gets it off into the hands of Scott. Kayla has it stripped away. Coming the other way, laying it off the glass and good from the right hand side is Tashley below. Tashley with the basket, her first two. Lady Coach trail by five, 14-9. Right wing, Ashley Starks. To get it out to Jefferson. Jefferson back to Starks. Left side, Scott faked the long shot, drove inside the lane. Got in some traffic and they're laid it up and in anyway. We got five points now, Lady Coach down by three at 14-11. 3-14 to go in this first quarter. Mid-snap up top. We'll get right side to the lane. We'll get back the other way. And then Williams looking down low. Chasing it down in the corner. Greyhounds have it tipped out and unable to chase it down. And then the ball goes over to Lily Coates. Last touch. Checks out. And Aaliyah Morton checks back in. Morton's going to get into the front court. Looks at right side to Fuller. Driving through the lane. Starks can't get the shot to go. And the rebound comes off to Delaney. To the back and back out. He got to Delaney with the basketball. Lady Colts down by 3, 14 to 11 with two and a half to go in this first quarter. Down low. Nice pass on the baseline. The shot will not go. There's Jefferson with another rebound. He's got a trio of them here in the first quarter. Lady Colts coming the other way. What a pass underneath. Into the hands of Morrison. Amari gets the basket. And give the assist to Aaliyah Morton. Lady Colts cut it to one. 14-13. Lady Greyhounds right side. Delaney trying to work against Morton. They'll dish it off to below. Left side, shot on the way from the perimeter. Won't go, the rebound tipped around, goes out of bounds. Last touch by the Lady Greenhouse. Yes, it was. By Jefferson's going to take the inbounds pass. And Leah Morton walking into the front court. Lady Cook with an opportunity to regain the lead here. 14 to 13. A minute 44 to play in the third quarter. Shot on the way, won't go. Rebound. 
John Morrison chases it down in the corner. Step back. Daisy Jefferson won't go, and the rebound is going to come off to the Lady Greyhounds. Delaney crosses the midcourt drive. We've got a timeout on the court. Our score. It's mid south 14, the Lady Colts 13, back home on the Lady we make sit-down chicken, stand-up chicken, backyard chicken, oops chicken, lots of time chicken, no time chicken. If there's one thing we know, it's chicken, chicken, and chicken. More choices, more wow, more to love. Tyson. Shot. Delaney bounces up top. Lost the handle momentarily. Shot blocked by Michaela Scott. And we've come to the end of the first quarter of play. Our score. Mid South 16, 13. We're back to on The Sevier County Farmers Co-op in Dequeen has cattle panels, fencing, water troughs, feed bins, culverts, you name it. At the feed store, find cattle feed, horse feed, goat, swine, rabbit, and pet feeds. The co-op is the area's pure arena dealer. The staff on hand has built a reputation through the years of having what farmers and ranchers need when they need it. It's all at the co-op. They even have deer feed to help you draw in that big buck. At the co-op service station, they'll fix you up with car and truck tires, tractor tires, they fix flats and do oil changes, plus they're a full service station. Neighbors working with neighbors to make our corner of the world a better place. It's the Sevier County Farmers Co-op. Morton. Here come the ladies go 
ball is going to be chased down by Lee. Lee gets it off to Reed. Reed over to Delaney. Lee to Lady Greyhounds. Look at left side. Reed to Lee. Lee tries to go inside. Defensive play that time on the part of the Lady Chorus, and that's Lee. Lady Chorus. Lee. For uh, the personal foul, wasn't it difficult? outside the lane. Now they're working inside and Lottie fell losing it that time. It's going to be on Kayla Scott. Scott calls the first one the first. And the Greyhounds with the ball in the play. On the baseline. And Hardy checks in. And Hardy wants to check out. So it's Hardy. Delaney, oh, nice spin move inside. Big collision inside, no call. Looked like Hardy had the uh, had her spot picked out right there, but the no call and the basket is good by Delaney. And it goes, oh, nice give underneath. <laughs> Hardy did everything she could. It was a little bit of body when she getting that one to go in. She was so all alone that time. I think it surprised her. She's got six points in the ball game. Lady Colts trail by five, 20 to 15. Up top, Delaney. Fires right side. Lady Greenhounds back out. A shot on the way off the iron and that's gonna go out of bounds. Last touch by the Lady Greenhounds. to Leah Morton walking into the front court. Lady Colts trailing 20 to 15. 645 to play in this first half. Saturday afternoon basketball here at the Bank of Lockenburg Gymnasium. Got a men's game to follow. It should be a good one as well. Morton works it right side to Scott. Scott found the defender. Off balance a little bit. Oh, nice give underneath. High off the glass and good. Kyler Hardy with the basket. Give Morton the assist. Another assist for Morton. That's her fourth of the day. Hardy with another basket. She's got eight points in the ball game. Mid South on top 20, 17. Inside the lane, Delaney has it stripped away. Last touch by Delaney. Fuller was there to get a hand on it in the uh, action that time. And let's see, it looks like Starks is going to check in. Ashley Starks comes in. Kayla Scott starts to trigger the inbound pass. So Lady Colts, a chance to cut in with a three point mid south lead. 2017, six minutes to play in the first half. Lady Colts looking for their first conference win. Mid south comes in 2 0 in play, conference play, and a reaching foul that time. Going to be whistled against Haven Cooper. Cooper calls the personal foul. It's her first. Lady Colts to have it underneath their own basket, trailing 20 to 17. Just under six minutes to play in this first half. Inbound pass in the corner, three pointer on the way. And Aaliyah Morton. When she shoots, people listen. She doesn't take a lot of shots. She hit four threes the other night down in Dallas. 
And she hits a big three right there as we're tied up at 20. Three-pointer on the way right back of the way. Jayla Reed. Reed hits her second three of the day. She's in double figures with 10. Lady Colts trail at 23-20. Fuller working out on the court. Pulls up. 12-footer. Won't go. There's Hardy grabbing that rebound, and she's going to be fouled. Couldn't get the shot to go. But Kyler's going to the charity stripe after getting with uh, getting uh, Lockett to reach in. And that was Xavier Lockett calling for the personal foul. And at the free throw line will be Kyler Hardy. Hardy's got eight points in the ballgame. First free throw of the day by Hardy, and it's up and in. Lady Colts is the team. One out of two at the charity stripe tonight. Trailing by two, 23-21. And Hardy cuts it in half with this one in, and she does. Hardy in double figures with 10 points. Mid-South on top by one, 23-22. 5-10 to go in this first half. Oh, uh, strip of the wall, wall away from behind was Morton. Ball picked up in the backcourt. Here comes Mid-South. 16 seconds on the shot clock. Long three-pointer on the way off the back of the iron wall. Go the rebound. Let's see here, coming out of there with it with Starks. see here. Possession arrow will point two bits out. Starks and uh, Eliana Williams both tied up. Trying to go for that loose ball. Possession arrow points to Lady Greyhounds. 23-22. 55 to play in this first half. That's Reed with it. Gets it out front. Pass it down low. Then back up top of the key. Shot on the way up and in. Ball put in that time by Williams. She's got five points in the ball game. Lady Colts trail by three, 25-22. Aaliyah Morton, out near the NJCAA logo. Right side, left right side it was, and a whistle and a foul. Starks and uh, Williams both going for that loose ball. Starks is gonna get called for the personal foul on that collision. Mid-South with a basketball, they're working left, left side. Nice drive on the baseline, laying it high off the glass and good. Nice move to the basket by Tashley. Tashley put it up and in, that's still a nice move in the middle. You can call it whatever you want to call it there. Ball stripped away that time by Reed. Fires it ahead. Shot off the glass and good by Lockett. Lockett with six points. Reed gets the steal and the assist. And Mid-South equals their biggest lead of the night at 7, 29, 22. 340 to play in this first half. Hardy goes strong to the basket, lays it off the glass and good. Tyler, 12 points in the ball game. Lady Colts down by 5, 29-24. They get it inside the lane. Coaches told Amber, kick it back out. And we've got a whistle inside the lane. Lane violation going to be called against the Greyhounds. And it looked like Amari Morris is going to come into the lineup for the Lady Colts. And checking out will be Daisy Jefferson. So with Morrison, along with Morton and Fuller and Starks, and Hardy. 315 to go. First half. Lady Coast Trail by five. Shot pulled up by Kayla Fuller. Nice form that time. Fuller with four points in the ball game. Lady Coast cut it to three. 29-26. Out on the wing. That's Reed. Jayla Reed works it inside. Oh, nice. We have been traffic. Shot put up and in. That's Williams. Got it in the hands of Lockett. Lockett gets the basket, but give Williams the assist. Lady Colts down by five, 31-26. Driving the other way. One-hander won't go by Morton. The rebound comes off to the Greyhounds, and they want to run. Out on the left wing. Shot on the way by Williams. Off the back of the iron, won't go in there. The rebound by Fuller. Lobs it ahead to Morton. Morton gets it off to Morrison. Morrison's going to be called for the trap. Yes. Over. 
21-26. Lady Colts trail by five. Shot put up inside the lane and a whistle and a foul. That may be on Morris. That is. Mari called for a personal foul. It's uh, her first, I believe. And into the free throw line. Will be Lee Williams. Lee down on the way is Julia Williams. Second point of the ball in the day. goes up, puts it in and out, no good, and the rebound comes off to the Lady Greyhounds. First and foul is going to be on Morton. Is that right? It is on Morton. Morton's first personal foul. A minute 46 to play in the first half. Minutes out on top by a score of 32 to 26. We're back after this from McDonald's on NADRadio.com. Before I forget, if someone asks if you want your quarter pounder's cheese on top of the patty or right below it, your answer is yes. The hottest, juiciest quarter pounder yet. It's perfect. Made perfecter. ba da ba 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 Scott steps back for the three, and it will not quite go in. Rebound comes off the Lady Greyhounds. They'll work it inside. Shot at the free throw line. Turn around, put up and in. And Haven Cooper. Lady Colts working inside. <laughs> Morrison just can't get that shot to go. He's had some opportunities inside, but just can't get that ball over the rim. Double-digit lead right now for the Lady Greyhounds. Up by 11, 37-26. Under 10 seconds to play in this first half. They'll hold it for one last shot. Out on the wing, 14-footer, and a foul from behind. Going to be called on Mark Morton, that is. Leah Morton called for a second personal foul. That's going to send two to the free throw line. Alina Williams. Williams on the day. One out of two at the Cherry Shrine. Six points in the ballgame. Still got six points in the ballgame. Back off no good. As a team, Mid-South only one out of five at the Cherry Shrine. Colts down, 38-26. Biggest lead of the game as Morton has it down to two seconds. One second, Morton will fire it up from the mid-court stride. 
off the iron, no good at the buzzer, and we'll head into the division. Mid-South on top, bias of 38 to 26. We'll be back with some halftime stats coming up in this state form. It is time for the final question. Who is offered the Rogers rate? Jacob State Farm, basically anyone. Sorry, buddy, that's incorrect. <laughs> See? We offer great rates that fit anyone's budget. That's enough. Thank you very much. Jessica in the middle. You said me? No. <laughs> what are we doing? Whatever. Also me. Great LOL. That was really important. Of course. Everybody gets the rates, I guess. For a surprisingly great rates that fit any budget, like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. Call or click to get a quote today. Your local State Farm insurance agent in DeQueen is Luke Billingsley, 870-642-2157. Wilkerson Funeral Home was established by the Wilkerson family in 1929. Fred Wilkerson Sr. built a reputation on serving others, putting families first, and operating with the highest standards of professionalism. With locations in DeQueen and Dirks, families of Southwest Arkansas continue to choose Wilkerson Funeral Home for their dependability, professionalism, and a staff that has acquired over 125 years of combined experience in the funeral business. Supporting our community and area schools, Wilkerson Funeral Home, and online at wilkersonfuneralhomes.com. Wilkerson Funeral Home was established by the Wilkerson family in 1929. Fred Wilkerson Sr. built a reputation on serving others, putting families first, and operating with the highest standards of professionalism. With locations in DeQueen and Dirks, families of Southwest Arkansas continue to choose Wilkerson Funeral Home for their dependability, professionalism, and a staff that has acquired over 125 years of combined experience in the funeral business. Supporting our community and area schools, Wilkerson Funeral Home, and online at wilkersonfuneralhomes.com. Look at where we are. Think of what we can do. What we're building together is special, and at Southwestern Electric Power Company, we know it's only the beginning. We can do more to improve our communities, our lives. We can reimagine how we use power and where that power comes from. We believe every person, no matter how unique, makes us stronger. By working together, the energy to accomplish our dreams is boundless.
Clear County Farmers Co-op in DeQueen has cattle panels, fencing, water troughs, feed bins, culverts, you name it. At the feed store, find cattle feed, horse feed, goat, swine, rabbit, and pet feeds. The co-op is the area's pure arena dealer. The staff on hand has built a reputation through the years of having what farmers and ranchers need when they need it. It's all at the co-op. They even have deer feed to help you draw in that big buck. At the co-op service station, they'll fix you up with car and truck tires, tractor tires. They fix flats and do oil changes. Plus, they're a full service station. Neighbors working with neighbors to make our corner of the world a better place. It's the Sevier County Farmers Co-op. Wade Cossetot Physical Therapist Assistant and Occupational Therapy Assistant programs in Ashdown are designed to give our students the skills needed to be job ready in only 30 months. At UA Cossetot, our instructors are knowledgeable and experienced. Our classes are affordable and small. And our facilities are big and well equipped. And you'll find our graduates on the job all over the four states area. And that's something to celebrate. Application deadline is March 1st. UA Cossetot, your career starts here. stretch right now. Yes. So how many hours a week do you in class? Um, we're in class about eight hours a day, but on Tuesdays and maybe Thursdays, we do clinical, so we're not in class on those days sometimes. Well, it's, uh, of course, they're not only active in the classroom, but uh, our, uh, our OTA students also come out and they help out at these like this. I know yes. there, there's a bunch of y'all are working in like concession stand and everything there, right? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Right. Well, what would you recommend? It? What's been your experience so far? Oh, I love it. Totally recommend So you recommend it? Absolutely. All right. Well, she is Allie Tucker. She's going to be with us uh, for a good portion of the day today. Keep up the good work, Allie, okay? Uh -huh. And again, it's half time here at the Mangalock for Historic Gymnasium where the Lady Colts Trail, the Lady Greyhounds, the Mid-South, last score of 36, to make that 38 to 26. We'll be back in a moment. Second half action here on 888 Radio. Hey, uh, I didn't order any pizza. Jake from State Farm. After you saved me so much dough on insurance with that Parker promo, I devised a promo for you. Here's the deal, Parker. State Farm offers everyone surprisingly great rates. Yeah, right. Pepperoni pockets, an atomic brownie, cuckoo crusty. There's no promo, it's just great rates. And a cider ranch. You're the man, man. When you want the real deal, like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. Your local State Farm insurance agent in DeQueen is Luke Billingsley, 870-642-2157. Defensively, 
Lady Greyhounds will have the basketball to start the second half. They lead by a dozen, their biggest lead of the night, 38-26. They'll get it down low, Lee fires it right back out again. Three-pointer on the way, rattles around and goes in. Shooters roll that time off the fingertips of Delaney. She's got five points in the ball game. And it's a 15-point lead right now for the Lady Greyhounds. Morton with it up top. Works it right side. Kayla Fuller attacks that baseline. Slides through there, gets to the corner to Jefferson. Her shot won't go, and there's Lee with a rebound. Lee has worked a lot on some rebounds, but not on that one. That was, that's made that look easy. Fires it back out front into the hands of Reed. Reed gets it to Lee. Lee looks over to the defender. Lost the basketball off her, off her uh, shin, and Morton is there to tie up that basketball. And the uh, Lady Colts will have it in front of the scorer's table. Morton with the basketball. Aaliyah gets it right side to Kayla Fuller. Fuller attacks, double team down low, and getting over there. Tie up that basketball with Lee. And uh, as Fuller hit the ground, Lee was there to help her right back up again. 41 26. Lee Greenham into the front court. That's Delaney. Works it left side. Off the dribble. Nice three hand run by Lee. Gets it right side. Three pointer on the way. Long three pointer. Long go. With the rebound. There's Lee to grab that rebound. Fights out of the uh, traffic inside, kicks it back out into the hands of Reed. Reed backs it back out again. Works it left side underneath the lead. Lee pressured underneath. And out. Loose ball is going to be picked up by the Lady Colts. Lee having a hard time inside. Lady Colts come out of there with it. Crazy. Or, uh, this is the uh, Jefferson. Puts it up. Long three-pointer won't go. And a whistle and foul is going to be on Kyle. Shot would not go, and the rebound's going to be hauled down by Jefferson. Jefferson looked like she meant business when she went in there to get that rebound. It's her fourth of the day. We're looking left side, Jefferson in the corner. Starks. Oh, nice runner. Ashley Starks. Nice athletic basket that time. That's her first two of the night. The Lady Colts cut it back to 13, 41, 28. Seven and a half to go in this third quarter. Pass underneath, shot put up and in by Williams. Melina Williams with a basket. She's got nine. Give that assist to Aaliyah Lee. Both way out front. Long three pointer by Morton. Won't go. Lee Lee's shot going to be hauled down by Aaliyah Lee. They're working ahead to Delaney. Delaney goes left side to Reed. Reed back to Delaney. Attacks. Has her progress cut off that time. Shot at the free throw line by Lee. Won't go. And the rebound. Picked up by Jefferson. And the Lady Colts will come the other way with it. 43-28. Scott thought about the three. Gets it back out to Morton. Morton attacks. Fires it back out. Long three-pointer by Ashley Starks. Will not go. Last touch by the shooter. 6.32 left to go in the third quarter. And the Greyhound has a basketball and a 15 point lead. Away, picked up by Jefferson. Jefferson brings it the other way for the Lady Colts. Gets it ahead into the hands of Starks. Starks scoops it up and in. Give it Jefferson the assist. Lady Colts down by 13, 43 30. Out on the left wing. Williams with it. 
Oh, nice bounce pass inside. Shot put up and in by Reed. Reed gets the basket. She's got 15 points in the ball game. With a nice assist that time by Williams. 45-30. Again, Mid-South equaling their biggest lead of the night at 15. Scott has it on the perimeter. In the corner, the Morrison has just checked in. Amari has it right side. She'll put up the three-pointer off the iron. Rebound, batted around, and is going to be chased down by the Greyhound. Starks over there to cut her off, but a good hustle that time on the part of Reed. Strong to the basket, lays it up, can't get it to go, and bringing down that rebound is Lee. Lee gets it ahead. Lee the right side, over to Delaney. Lee, around the screen by Lee, loose ball picked up by Scott. Scott with a steal, fires it ahead, looking for Starks. Starks tries to tip it to Fuller, and Fuller just couldn't quite control it that time. Ball goes out of bounds. Hardy, Hardy gets it ahead to Starks. Excuse me, that's not Starks, that's Fuller. Fuller takes it all away. Lays it off into the glass and good. Fuller with the basket. Here we go. that pass. Oh, wow, coming down with it with Starks. What a play on the part of Ashley Starks. Went high, walked the tightrope to keep that ball in bounds, and then did a little ballerina move as she laid that thing off the glass and good. 45-34, Lady Colts down by 11, back after this from A.B. Have the basketball as we resume action here. The Lady Colts trailing by a score of 45 34. Shot to the corner on the way up and in. Long distance three pointer that time. Smooth shot by Milo. Ashley now with seven points in the ball game. Lady Colts the other way. Ball stolen away by the Lady Greyhound. Look at left side. In the hands of Delaney. Delaney gets it to Lee. Alita cross courts that ball. Becca stops to Delaney. Delaney working. He gets Starks. There's a collision underneath. That's going to be a charge on Delaney. As Kayla Fuller stood her ground, took the charge. Delaney calls for a second quarter. Scott, Morton, Jefferson, 
Fuller and Starks in the lineup for the Lady Colts. What a move a moment ago, right before that timeout by Ashley Starks. Wow. Don't forget right side, Morton has it out there. Run it by the Lady. Shot is blocked out of bounds. I think Lee and the Lady may have both got a hand on that ball. 48-34, Lady Colts down by 14 with 2.45 to play in this contest. Jefferson. Partially blocked that time, but the loose ball picked up by Morton. Dishes off to Starks and underneath. Starks gets the basket, and Morton gets the assist. Lady Colts got it to a dozen, 48-36 now, with 2.25 to go in the ball in the uh, third quarter. And let's see. Apparently, uh, Fuller's got the hand on that ball across the way. Pretty good crowd today. Pass underneath, that's going to be a foul from behind. Fuller tried to get high enough, tip that ball away from behind, over the top of Lee, but the Lee is not exactly short. He's going to get sky high to get that ball, tip that ball over the top of Lee. Fuller will be called for the first foul, that's her second. Long inbound pass, out front. That's Reed with it, looking inside. Get it to Delaney, Delaney to Lee, Lee. Nice give in, inside the lane, a reach and foul. It's gonna be called on Ashley Starks. Lockett's going to the free throw line. Ashley Starks will the first one. Lee has three, four to four, and Starks with two each for the Lady Colts. It's been a serious one. Lockett has a free throw line. Lee going to call him the first half. That's her first trip to the free throw line today. She knocked that one down. Nine points in the ball game for Lockett. Oh, Dave. Put this second up and in. Ten points now, double figures now for Lockett. Joining her teammate, Jayla Reed, in double figures. Reed has 15. The Lady Colts trail by 14 now. 50 to 36. Scott having some trouble up top. Gets away momentarily. Drives through the lane. Lost an off her knee. Ball goes out of bounds. And then. They're going to call Scott for the personal foul. Trying to get that basketball back. The Greyhounds have it. Under two minutes to play in the third quarter. Reed works his left side. They get it over to Delaney. Back to Reed in the corner. Good defense that time by Kyra Hardy. Reed brings it back out. Gets it inside to Reed. Reed working down low. Puts it up. Can't get it to go. Shot up and in. And Aaliyah Reed gets her first point of the night with a minute 28 to go here in this third quarter. And first foul on the That's her third. Lee has been free throw line. Try to complete the fashion three point play. Still the two experience. Comes off to Hardy. Hardy has it. Gets it over to Morton. Lee leads it to the right side to Scott. Michaela shot. In and out. No good. The rebound picked up by Lee. Lee gets it off to Reed. Reed jogs it into the front court. And we'll hit it to play in this third quarter. Inside pass to Lee. Aaliyah. Holds it high above her head. Now gives the left side. Three pointer on the way. By Reed, won't go. There's Amari Morris to grab that rebound. And Lady Colts will come the other way. Let's see. And it's going to be a personal foul called against Aaliyah Lee. That's going to be her third.
basket that time by Kyler Hardy. Hardy with 14 points of the ball game. Lady Colts down by 14, 52-38. Over a half a minute to play in this third quarter. About a four or five second shot clock differential here. Mid-South will have to uh, take a shot. Lady Colts will have another possession in this third quarter. Up top, Reed with it, works it left side. Delaney's shot is an air ball. They back in bounds, and the shot clock goes off. Good defense that time by the Lady Colts. 4.1 to go in this third quarter. Lady Colts will have it on the far end. Trailing by 14. Inbounds pass, Morton chases it down. Drives all the way up, lays the ball off the back of the iron wall, going the rebound, fought for. And apparently the uh, buzzer did not sound for some reason here. Not sure what happened there, but uh, anyway, the clock has expired. We've come to the end of the third quarter of play. It's Mid-South 52. Lady Colts 38. Back after this, we will go to the State Farm Insurance Day. Great rates. Yeah, right. Pepperoni pockets, an atomic brownie, cuckoo crusty. There's no promo, it's just great rates. And a cider ranch. You're the man, man. When you want the real deal, like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. Your local State Farm insurance agent in DeQueen is Luke Billingsley, 870 642 2157. that time by Delaney in the basket by Milo. She got nine points in the ball game. Cassie with nine. And the Lady Colts down by 16. The biggest lead of the day for the Lady Greyhounds down low. That's Amari Morrison. Nice shot. Hard off the glass and good. Morrison giving her first basket of the day. Actually, it's not the third four points of the day. That one, she earned 54-40. Underneath, and Starks tying it up, and they're gonna say Starks had at least part of the rinse of Reed. Matthew Starks going for a third personal foul. Game. A lot of time here. 
Stops and pops. Amari Morrison, six points now. And he goes down by a dozen, 54 42. At the free throw line, that's Lee. Nice pass. Up and in. Shot put in by Williams. Williams gets the basket. She's in double figures with 11. And another assist for Lee. Morton drives. Got around the defender, but lost the handle on the basketball. Her eyes had to get big right there. Is that uh, look like a good lane for the, uh, for the goal? By 12, 56 to 42. Out on the left wing. That's Delaney, running by Scar. Driving through the lane, and they're going to call a blocking foul. Maybe on Hardy, huh? Maybe on Hardy. Well, Amari calls the first Fires it down low. Oh, nice pass on the baseline. Shot put up and in by Williams. She's got 13. Nice pass by Hayden Cooper. Give her the assist. 60 to 42. They go up down by 18 now. Pass inside. Intended for Morrison. Lee comes away with it. And gets it ahead. Puts up the three. Hard off the back of the iron. Scott grabs a rebound. And the Lady Colts will come the other way. And the pass is going to be stolen away by Reed. Nice give. Right side. High off the glass and good. That's Milo again with another basket. Lady Colts down by 18 now. 62 to 42. Actually by 20. Stark driving down, low blocking foul going to be on Lee. Aliyah called for a fourth person foul.
Head south on top of the Lady Colts. And, beautiful Lady and of course, we do have Colts merchandise available at our new stop at the games. And all of our Colts fans coming in today wearing Colts merchandise, getting free today. See some really good uh, looking merch out there. Walking the streets nowadays. As Lady Greyhounds facing full court pressure here. And they break it easily. They'll get it in the hands of Lee. And Aaliyah puts it up and in. She's got four points in the ball game. Lady Colts down by 20, equaling the biggest lead of the day. Five mid south. Three pointer on the way by Michaela Scott. Scott knocks it down. Her second three of the day. She got eight points on the game. Lady Colts pressuring that basketball right now. Coming the other way, Lee. Takes the pass, lays it up and in. Aliyah Lee with six points, all of them in the second half. Lady Colts down, 66-47. Underneath, Jefferson in traffic, gets it off to Fuller. Fuller lays it up and in, and she's going to be fouled. And I think that may be number four on Aliyah Lee. That's her fifth personal foul. Balance fouls there, but uh, wasn't a big presence offensively, but uh, certainly his presence defensively. And the they had several assists today as Fuller's shot won't go, and the rebound comes off to the Lady Greyhounds. Although the Lady Colts steal it away, and then well, the Lady Greyhounds steal it right back again. Inside the lane, trying to tie it up with Starks. It's going to be Starks and Jefferson. That's Starks. Ashley Starks has picked up her fourth personal foul. As Delaney tries to the lane, lays it high off the glass and good. Deanna Delaney now, seven points in the ball game. Three pointer on the way will not go, but the rebound comes off to Jefferson, gets it inside to Fuller. Goes down hard on the court, no call. And the ball goes right back over to the Lady Greyhounds and a three pointer on the other way. Long three pointer up and in by Reed. Reed's fourth three pointer on the day. 18 points in the ball game for Jayla. Lady Colts trying to work through the lane. Starks put it up and a charging foul on Ashley Starks. And that'll be all for Ashley. So Ashley Starks fouls out. Finishes the day with 10 points all over here in the second half. Lady Colts is full court pressure trailing by 22, 71 to 49. Delaney, nice give, baseline, shot won't go, but a whistle and a foul, and the personal foul is going to be on Jefferson. And Asia picks up her first personal foul, and head to the free throw line will be Lockett. Alan Davis, 10 points in the ball game, two, two at the free throw line tonight. Get out of the way, and that was missed. It's missed by a little bit. What do I get? Lockett will have another one. That one's up and in. Lockett now with 11. Lady Colts down court, right side. Fuller goes baseline. And you can hear the, you can hear the skin that time. And the personal foul is going to be on Delaney. I'm sorry, that's Williams. Four ten to go in the ball game. Lady Colts down by 21 points. Delaney has it. Right side. 
Steps inside the lane, puts it up no good, and there's Scott with a rebound. And look at left side. Hardy in the hands of Morton over to Scott. Back to Morton. Wants to attack. Pulls up. Gets the shot to go, and she's going to the free throw line. Tough shot by Morton. And a personal foul is going to be shown against the Hawkins. That's her fourth. And at the free throw line for the Lady Coats will be Morton. Aliyah Morton, Tori Morton, Lady of First Christian. Six points in the ballgame, and that was a three-point play right there for Morton. And the Lady Colts cut it back to 18-72-54. Left side, Williams, nice move on the basket. Split the defenders, Melina Williams with 15 points. Lady Colts down by 20, 74-54. As Morrison drives in the lane, high off the glass, won't go, gets her own rebound, puts it up and in. Personal foul is going to be whistled against Haven Cooper and Morris is going to the free throw line to try to lead three points. Play. She's got eight points in the ball game. That shot is going to go. And with it, three hands of play in the ball game. On top, 74 56 inside the lane. Shot by Williams won't go, and is that going to be on Fuller? It is. Kayla just picked up her fourth personal foul. Coach Hurd wanted an explanation here about how it was a foul. He gets one, and head to the free throw line will be the lady. Shots on the way and in. Starks goes all the way, lays it up, and it's a blocking foul. going to be a charge. Big whistle delivery. That is a blocking foul. And uh, hold your breath right there because uh, Kayla Fuller driving on the basket. She's got the personal foul. And that will be number three right now for Delaney. As Fuller has the free throw. the lane. Oh, got the ball caught on her hip that time. Here's a call for the travel. by Delaney. Nice give. Williams gets the basket. Give Delaney the assist. 78-58. 20-point lead right now for the Greyhounds. 2.05 to go. At the free throw line. That's Hardy. Oh, nice give that time. Leah Morton's shot would not go, and the rebound comes off to the Greyhounds. Williams gives it out to Delaney. Delaney's going to back it back out again. Under two minutes to play in the ball game. In south, looking for the 
remain undefeated in conference play. As a rebound comes off to Morrison, Morrison gets it ahead to uh, Morton. In the corner to start. And down low, there's a whistle. Come to the end of this one. Final score. Mid South 82. Lady Colts 61. We'll be back with some final stats in a moment on NADRadio.com. Making the best of it. For the restaurants delivering to our doorsteps. For the frontline workers putting it on the line every single day. For this great nation, determined to be stronger on the other side. Thanks to all of you, we'll be together again.
Well, we're in between contests here as the uh, Lady Colts uh, come up short against uh, a very good Mid-South basketball team as the uh, Lady Greyhounds win it by a score of 82 to 61. Leading the way for the Lady Greyhounds today was Kaylee Reed with 20 points, 17 for Melina Williams, 13 points in the ball game today for Tashley Milo, 11 points for uh, Alan Davia Lockett as the uh, Lady Greyhounds finished with four players in double figures, nine points for uh, Kiana Delaney, six points each for Aaliyah Lee and Haven Cooper as the uh, Lady Greyhounds run their record at 10 and seven on the season, three and zero in conference play. Meanwhile, the Lady Colts fall to 0 and four in conference play, seven and eight on the season after dropping this 82-61 uh, contest. 14 points in the ball of the game for Kyler Hardy, 12 points for Kayla Fuller, and 10 points for Ashley Stark. Uh, finishing with eight points each was Aaliyah Morton and Amari Morrison and Michaela Scott. Again, the Lady Colts fall to seven and eight on the season and 0 and four in conference play. That's their fifth straight loss, but uh, knew it was gonna be a hard day today because this is a, it's a good program at Mid-South. A uh, good basketball team. And speaking of good basketball teams, we're getting set to watch the uh, Colts and the uh, Greyhounds go head to head in a men's contest. And we'll have that contest for you uh, in just a little bit here on at 88 radiocom Offers everyone surprisingly great rates. Yeah, right. Pepperoni pockets, an atomic brownie, cuckoo crusty. There's no promo, it's just great rates. And a cider ranch. You're the man, man. When you want the real deal, like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. Your local State Farm insurance agent in DeQueen is Luke Billingsley, 870-642-2157.
Casatot Colts merchandise is now available at the ERCs in DeQueen, Ashdown, and Nashville. Come on in and let our friendly staff show you around. We have a lot to choose from, including t-shirts in a variety of styles, colors, caps, hoodies, polos, long sleeve t-shirts. We have joggers and stuff like coffee mugs and insulated thermal tumblers, as well as flash drives, lanyards, and power bank chargers. Just let the staff know what you need, and who knows, they might even model it for you. Show your Casa Tot school spirit. Get your Colts merchandise today at an ERC near you. It's time now for a fun fact of the day. Brought to you this morning by Don's Easy Pay. In our studio this morning, somebody who, uh, well, I guess once upon a time, uh, he was a non-traditional student. He became a student ambassador, and now he works for us. He is Dennis Guzman of UA Casa. How are you doing, Dennis? I'm doing good. How are you? Doing wonderful. Doing wonderful. Dennis, uh, tell us what you're doing this semester at UA Casa. Yeah, so um, we're we're doing a lot of great things uh, for one for with the Center for Student Success, but also with Student Ambassadors. Mm -hmm. I once was a Student Ambassador last semester. Once upon a time. 
but they were like, you know what, you're 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 not fit to be a Syrian ambassador, so <laughs> we'll do you one better. We'll make you a sponsor of the Syrian ambassador. So I was like, you know what, I'll take that deal. Well, you know, one thing I like about Dennis is the fact that uh, uh, to him it's not just a job. I mean, he, he puts his, his heart and soul into it. I, I mean, he, he he puts a lot out there. I really try. And and really that's try. that's what makes it work. Yeah. I mean, you have to be passionate about it. Yeah. You know, I started with the last semester when I was here talking to you promoting student ambassador events, mm -hmm. I was working for the ERC, mm -hmm. you know, and now I've, through the grace of God and, and, and a ton of luck, uh -huh. you know, and a lot of people along the way helping me, I was able to get, you know, hired here full, full time and now I'm working for the Center for Student Success and I'm loving it. And my job here with the Center for Student Success is to help our students um, any way that we can. We have a food pantry that we, we run here. We have uh, three of them in, on all three campuses, Ashdown, Bee Queen, and here in Nashville. Um, I'm based here in, in Nashville. Um, we have Erica Buenrostro and Alyssa Cook in Bee Queen, and we have Alyssa Cook and um, Julie Cliff in Ashdown. Mm -hmm. And then you have me here in, in Nashville. <laughs> so we provide um, food pantry items for our students. Um, it's a tough time for a lot of students. You oh, know? Yeah. COVID really messed up a lot of things, and and people lost their jobs or they got hours cut or whatnot, you know. A lot of students are coming here, um, you know, being single parents and they're, they're struggling. It's tough times for everybody. And so we decided, you know, well, what better way to help our students than by being able to offer them something, you know, uh, through the food pantry. So we offer food to any student that comes in here. Um, we have hygiene products as well. Mm -hmm. um, we have school supplies like pens and paper and notebooks and all that. Um, and we also have these handy dandy cult cards um, that we give out to our students every once a week uh -huh. um, at the Ash at the Bee Queen and Nashville campus since we have cafes here uh -huh. and um, so a student can come every week get one of those cards and then you can use it to get a hot meal at the cafe in Ashdown unfortunately we don't have uh, a cafe there mm -hmm. but um, Julie Clift and Alyssa Cook were were smart enough to talk to the people at Brookshire's and, and they partnered up and now they have gift cards that they're giving out to the students so that they can go and get a hot meal from there or groceries if they need it. So we try to help any way that we can. Um, that's our main focus is, is our students because without our students, this school, you know, it's not gonna run. And we need our students to come here. We need them to get educated so that they can go out and, and if we can go and, and, and spread a little bit of positivity, you know, that, we hope that that passes on to other students as well, and out into the world whenever they graduate. Well, I know I was in uh, in Nashville on on Wednesday and uh, had three uh, young people come by looking looking for Colts Bucks cards. Yeah. I mean, it's something very much in demand. It's there's certainly a need. And you mentioned the fact that Brookshire's uh, we were able to team up with Brookshire's mm -hmm. in Ashdown. They've been a wonderful partner yes. with UA Casa Tot oh, yeah. and the community oh, yeah. down there for a number of years, but. Yep. Uh, there have also been donations made by individuals mm -hmm. uh, to the food pantry, whether you're talking about money or freezers. I mean, there have been a number of civic yes. clubs that have donated yeah. freezers and things like that. So yep. uh, it takes it takes a community to make this work. It really does. And it, it really just does. feels good that we've got somebody, uh, you know, heading it up that's, uh, that's you know, kind of overseeing things and making yeah. sure that, that uh, you know, things are happening like they're supposed to. Yeah, we have a good team working working around us right now, and, and we all work our or do our best to work together and, and try to help our students. I mean, it takes a team, like you said, to be able to do this, and, and I can't do this alone. Like, Erica is a great, great mentor. She's a great boss. You have Alyssa Cook. You have Julie Cliff. So it, it takes a team to be able to do this, and so anything that we can do to help our students, and, you know, um, we, we try. Well, just simply ask when you uh, you come to UA Casa Todd, ask about about our food pantries and, and ask about the services that are offered, and uh, we'll certainly get you hooked up. Yeah, definitely. All right. Well, Dennis, thanks uh, thanks for all you do. Keep up the good work, my Appreciate friend. It. Thank you. And that is our fun fact of the day, brought to you this morning by Don's Easy Pay here on Ed eighty eight. And thank you, Dennis Guzman, student ambassadors, and of course our UA Costa food pantry. As a matter of fact, you want to help out the food pantry and get a shot at winning a Samsung 50-inch television just in time for Super Bowl time? Well, uh, UA Costas Food Pantry, thanks to Gayla Urban, who uh, purchased a 50-inch big screen TV. Uh, we're going to be giving that away on Saturday, February 12th, uh, the day before the Super Bowl. 
and you got plenty of time to get your name in the entries. You get, get entries in. Every time you give us a canned good or a non-perishable food item, you go for our UA Costa Food Pantry, uh, you are going to get an entry. Uh, it's one entry for every can. And our drawing will be held on Saturday, February 12th, right here at the Bank of Lawrenceburg Historic Gymnasium during our UA Costa SAU Tech basketball game on Saturday, February 12th. And of course, Super Bowl's the very next day. And you could have a brand new TV, and you could certainly help out some folks who need some help during these uh, crazy times in which we are in. The UA Costa Food Pantry serve our students on all of our campuses, and uh, you make it happen. And uh, our thanks to Gayla Urban for, you know, getting a, a big screen TV and allowing us to, to promote that food pantry even more. As the UA Costa Colts get set to take on the Greyhounds in what should be an excellent matchup. Last time out for the Greyhounds, yeah, well, it's, it's been a week ago. They were supposed to play a game earlier this week. That got canceled. Their last time out, they, uh, they got everybody's attention when they went uh, and, and defeated National Park Community College. National Park had already beaten SAU Tech and uh, it also defeated North Arc. And then it was uh, Mid-South defeating North Park or uh, National Park by a final score of 71-69. And in that game, it was uh, J.T. Smith leading away with 16. Tim Johnson had 11. And Sam Smith had 10. Meanwhile, the Colts, as we're going to set the starting lineups here, here's John Bunger. Uh, Phillips, Anderson, Bell, Nash, and Woods for the Colts. Colts without the services of DeLon Dean today. DeLon, of course, one of the top three-point shooters in the country. Hit six three-pointers his last time out down in Dallas this past Wednesday when the Colts went down there and de defeated the Dallas Christian College JV 133-43. to Been around a lot of basketball. I haven't seen too many 90-point margins, but that's exactly what it was the other day. Terry Anderson for the Colts is uh, this week's NJCAA Division II Player of the Week for the second time this season. And looking forward to the matchup between he and the guy in the jump circle with him, JT, or uh, excuse me, Sam Smith, two of the finer players in Division II. As the opening tip is controlled by the Colts, Malik Nash will bring it into the front court. Big conference matchup between these two. Anderson drives the lane, lays it up, can't get it to go. The rebound tipped around and picked up by the Greyhounds. Jones coming the other way, up top. He'll get it in the hands of McEwen. That's Smith. Sam working against Anderson. Colts putting the pressure on defensively, and they tried to get it down low to Smith. Smith was road roadblock down there between Anderson and Shane Bell, that's a turnover, and the Colts get it. No score in the ball game just underway as Nash gives it off to Cameron Woods. Woods drives, 
Puts it high off the glass, can't get it to go, and the rebound's gonna be pulled down by Tim Johnson. Johnson and the Greyhounds come the other way. That's Jeremiah Jones. Jones will get it out to J.T. Smith. J.T. works it into the hands of Johnson. Tim. Now they work it down low to Sam Smith. We're going to get it to Anderson. That was high off the back of the iron. No good. Rebound tipped back out. And the Greyhounds get it again. Sam Smith fires it back out again. Johnson at the free throw line, shot on the way, rims out, no good, the rebound's gonna come off to Malik Nash. Nash grabs the rebound, and he'll lead the charge. Driving the baseline, shot put up, won't go by the uh, Colts Shane Bell, and that rebound is gonna be picked up by the Greyhounds. No score in the ball game. We played almost a minute and 45 seconds, no score. A couple of high-powered teams right here. A couple of heavyweights going head to head here. Jones with it. Jeremiah gets it right back out to JT Smith. JT to Jeremiah Jones. Jones gets it out to Sam Smith. Sam fires it inside. Turn around shot. No. And it was kind of a late whistle. Not saying it wasn't a foul. Just seems a little late right there. But the personal foul is going to be called on Malik Nash. Nash call for the personal. Heading to the free throw line. Will be Braxton McEwen. No score in the ball game. We played two minutes. Actually, over two minutes. 17.59 to go in this first half. And that one's up and in. So McEwen breaks the ice for the Greyhounds. Another one coming. Sends it on the way, and it is in there. Greyhounds go up 2 nothing. Colts have the basketball. Nash will walk it toward the midcourt stripe. Picked up at the, by Jones at midcourt. Nash drives through the lane, high off the glass and good. Malik Nash, nice explosive step that time to get around the defender. We're tied at two. That's Jones with the basketball. Nash comes out on him. Jeremiah looking inside. They'd like to get it to Sam Smith. Instead, they get it to JT Smith. Back over to Jones, going baseline. Forced his way. Underneath, they'll kick it back out on the wing. Shot will not go, and that rebound is going to be tipped high in the air. And out of bounds, last touch by the Greyhounds. The Colts will have the basketball, an opportunity to take the lead here, tied at two with 17-21 to go here in this first half. Nash around the screen as his pass tipped out of bounds. Across the way, last touch by the Greyhounds. The Colts put it in play on the side across the way. To Cameron Woods will trigger the inbounds pass. Inbounds pass into the hands of Shane Bell. Bell's going to back it out. Right, right side. Terry Anderson tries the three in there. Terry Anderson knocks it down. Anderson has certainly improved his three-point shooting since the uh, since the break. Colts on top, 5-2. Left side. Greyhounds try to go underneath. Whistle in the foul. Is that going to be on Bell? Let's see. No, it's not going to be on Bell. The whistle is going to be on, uh, on Corey and Phillips. Phillips called for the personal foul. Head to the free throw line will be Jim Johnson. Two goals on time. Johnson's shot is on the way, and it's off the front of the iron. No good. Greyhounds now two out of three at the free throw line as a team. And the second shot is it's off the front of the iron. No good. There's Shane Bell to grab that rebound. Colts will come the other way with it. They work it right side to Anderson. Anderson off the dribble. Oh, nice give underneath the Cameron Woods. Shot would not go. And the rebound comes off to the Greyhounds. They'll race the other way underneath. That's Smith going to the basket. Will it be on Nash or will it be on Bell? Let's see. Actually, it's going to be on Nash, and that'll be his second. Malik Nash called for a second person foul, heading to the free throw line. The big guy, Sam Smith. Sam looking for his first point of the day. Shot is on the way, and it's in there. 5-3, Colts on top. All of the, the uh, Greyhounds.
Greyhound points from the free throw line as Malik Nash is going to come out of the lineup and checking in in his place will be right. Second shot up and in by Smith. He's got four or two points and it's 5 4. Driving the lane, laying it up and in. Jordan Wright's shot would, or Anderson's shot would not go, but there's putting that shot right back up and in was Woods. Cameron with the basket. Greyhounds have it out on the perimeter. Traveling's the call. Good defense that time on the part of DeCorian Phillips. Sam Smith got caught in the air. Couldn't get rid of the basketball. It's turnover. Comes over the Colts there on top. Seven to four. 15.45 to play in this first half. Anderson out on the right wing. Fronted over there by Sam Smith. As that pass is tipped away, knocked out of bounds by J.T. Smith. Smith. Good defensive anticipation that time. Got in the pass lane, tipped it away, just couldn't quite catch up with it. But the Colts have put it in play in the backcourt. 15 seconds on the shot clock here. As Anderson drives into the lane, in traffic. Let's see, what are they calling here? Uh, he's going to be fouled in the act of shooting. Man, he got in there, found a triple. There are a lot of traffic. And he was bailed out that time by Sam Smith. Smith calls the personal foul. And head to the free throw line will be Terry Anderson. Anderson, three points in the ball game. Hit that three-pointer a moment ago. First free throw of the day for the Colts is up and in. Four points for Anderson, and the Colts lead it. Eight to four. Anderson, second shot, up and in. Terry with five points in the ball game. Colts lead by five, nine to four. Fifteen and a half minutes to play in this first half. Out on the wing, they get it to Sam Smith, top. And DeCorian Phillips tips it away. Anderson comes the other way with it. Gets it ahead to Bell. Bell puts it in, and, and he's going to be fouled in the act of shooting. Shane Bell heading to the free throw line as he is fouled by Tim Johnson. So that's going to be uh, Shane Bell heading to the free throw line. Shot is up and in. Shane Bell in the scoring column now. The old-fashioned three-point play. And the Colts have their biggest lead of the night at 12-4, and we've got a timeout on the court. 15-10 to play in this first half. Colts on top by a score of 12-8. Back after this on NADRadio.com. UA Casa Tot Colts merchandise is now available at the ERCs in DeQueen, Ashdown, and Nashville. Come on in and let our friendly staff show you around. We have a lot to choose from, including t-shirts in a variety of styles and colors, caps, hoodies, polos, long sleeve t-shirts. We have joggers and stuff like coffee mugs and insulated thermal tumblers, as well as flash drives, lanyards, and power bank chargers. Just let the staff know what you need, and who knows, they might even model it. Greyhounds have the basketball as we resume action here. J.T. Smith out on the left wing. A brand new face in the lineup here. That's O.J. Mars checking in the lineup for the Greyhounds. Right side, Smith looking inside for Sam. Smith, ball stolen away. That's Anderson coming the other way with it. Terry looks away. Gets it back up top, right side to Corian Phillips for three. Knocks him down to Corian. Colts are going to need some of that today in the absence of their leading three-point shooter, DeLon Dean. Underneath, Sam Smith shot, got it to go, and let's see. Out front and the ball is stolen away. 
That's uh, Cameron Woods, puts it off the glass, no good. Gets his own rebound, though, and gets it back out front. Anderson has it. Anderson working against Sam Smith, goes inside. Now we're getting left side. Woods three won't go, but the rebound's gonna be pulled down by the Greyhounds, quickly down court. Getting in there, getting a hand on it with the Colts. Caleb Allen couldn't get the, uh, the shot to go. The ball went out of bounds, and it's the last touch by the Colts. And Malik Nash is gonna check back in. Shane Bell gonna come out. Nash in the lineup with a couple of personal fouls. For the Colts, 14.02 to go in this first half. Inbounds pass. And Allen couldn't quite control it. They had the right idea on the inbounds pass. But Caleb may not have been able to believe how wide open he was. He broke into the open and just couldn't control that pass. Colts get it back, leading 15 to four. Out front it goes to Woods. Woods goes left side to Nash. Underneath to Anderson, goes up for the shot. It's gonna be blocked out of bounds. Allen on the other end, he along with his teammate, O.J. Mars, both of them over there defensively. Somebody got a hand on that ball and blocked it out of bounds. Colts will have it with 19 seconds on the shot clock. Woods will make the inbounds pass. He gets it to Jordan Wright. Wright, turnaround shot, would not go. And the rebound comes off to the Greyhounds. Caleb Allen, out beyond the arc. Swings it back out front, lost the handle on the pass, goes out of bounds, and the Colts will get it back. Colts, or Allen actually tried to take that pass back. Realized there wasn't anybody home, and it was too late. Looks like we're gonna have a fresh face check in the lineup here. Christian Thompson checks in for the Greyhounds. Also in the lineup is uh, Makai Washington. Colts will have the ball, the inbounds plays, as Malik Nash has it, 13 and a half minutes to play. In this first half, Shane Bell gets it off to Anderson. Terry working down low. Goes up strong. He's going to the free throw line. He'll be shooting a couple here. Personal foul is going to be called on O.J. Mars. And head to the free throw line will be Terry Anderson. Anderson with five points in the first half. Two for two at the free throw line thus far. The only two. The only free throws the Colts have shot this far. Anderson shots on the way. It's up and in. Terry, as we said, this past week's NJCAA Division II Player of the Week. It's a national honor. Second time he's earned it this season. Shot off the back of the iron. This one's going to be hauled down by T.J. Stewart of the Greyhounds. Left side to Allen. Allen backs it back out. Colts puts pressure on the basketball on top, 16 to four. Bounce pass down low, and Jordan Wright putting the defense on, and that's gonna result in a Greyhound turnover. Christian Thompson traveled with the basketball. Good job defensively, Jordan Wright. Jordan had a big game the other night down in Dallas. Wound up with 16 points, all of them in the second half. He couldn't miss the second half. Getting some playing time early on today. Lon Dean out of the lineup, not with us today. You, know, you always miss a guy like that, but especially when you're taking on a quality team like the Greyhounds. Pass by Nash, tipped around, picked up by Anderson. Anderson, some traffic in the corner. Nine seconds on the shot clock. Works inside the lane, in traffic, gets it over to Jordan Wright, steps back, fires it up, can't get it to go. Rebound tipped by Bell, but picked up by the Greyhounds. Across the midcourt, so that's Anderson putting the pressure on. Right side, three-pointer on the way, in and out, no good. Jordan right there defensively, can't get the rebound. Shot put up and in by Christian Thompson. Thompson coming off the Greyhound bench to get a bucket. Colts on top by 10, 16 to six, three-pointer, Terry Anderson. Anderson with a pair of threes in this first half. Not known for well, he's known for a lot of different skills. And I'm not sure three-point shooting is at the top of that list. He's a good three-point shooter. The Colts need somebody busting it from the outside today in the absence of Delon Dean. And Anderson's hit a couple of them. Driving through the lane, nice scoop shot from the left side. Layup up and in by Jalen Anderson of the Greyhounds. Colts lead back to 11, 19 to eight. Led by as many as 13 before that basket. 
Left side, that's Anderson, sees a lane to the basket, lays it off the glass, no good, gets his own rebound momentarily, but that's stolen away, and coming out of there with it will be the Greyhounds. Jalen Anderson pulls up, up top. Shane Bell putting some pressure on the basket. Driving the lane, shot put up, and uh, no good, but I think Anderson's gonna be called for the personal foul. Terry Anderson's gonna be called for the personal, that will be his first. Head to the free throw line to shoot a pair will be Makai Washington. Washington looking for his first points of the day as a team. Mid South, four out of six the free throw line tonight. First one on the way is good. We played almost nine minutes of basketball, and uh, Mid South has only hit one field goal tonight. As Leighton Jackson and Camden Woods, a couple of Texas Cannon players, check in the lineup for the Colts. Shots on the way is good. I said, what did I say? Cameron Woods, hey, he's not from Texas, can What am I talking about here? Malik Nash with the basketball. Gets it right side to Woods. Cameron, a little collision up top, no call. Nash off the dribble, drives through the lane, in the corner, back out it goes. Two pointer, or three pointer on the way by DeCorian Phillips. DeCorian with the basket. Four three pointer of the day for the Colts, the second for DeCorian. 22-10, Colts on top by a dozen. Backing it back out again, that's Anderson. Jalen lost the handle on it, picked up by Nash. Gets it ahead to Bell, Bell lays it up and in. Shane Bell with the basket, 14 point lead for the Colts. 24 to 10, driving the lane, backing up, shot up, fall away, won't go, tip up, put it in. That's Makai Washington with the uh, tip in. 24 to 12. Colts on top by a dozen. That's to Corian Phillips off the dribble. Gets it out to Woods. Woods to Nash. Nash looking for Woods. Cameron couldn't quite catch up. Somebody got a hand on it over there. I think they're going to say that Caleb Allen may have had a hand on it. Went out of bounds. Sam Smith, along with Braxton McEwen, gets set to check back in the lineup here. We've got a timeout on the court. Our score, Colts 24, Mid-South 12, 9.42 to play in this first half. We're back after this on NAD Radio. UA Casa Tot Colts merchandise is now available at the ERCs in DeQueen, Ashdown, and Nashville. Come on in and let our friendly staff show you around. We have a lot to choose from, including t-shirts in a variety of styles, colors, caps, hoodies, polos, long sleeve t-shirts. We have joggers and stuff like coffee mugs and insulated thermal tumblers, as well as flash drives, lanyards, and power bank chargers. Just let the staff know what you need, and who knows, they might even model it for you. Show your Casa Tot school spirit. Colts will have the basketball underneath their own basket. Seven seconds on the shot clock. Anderson fires it inside, looking for Leighton Jackson. Jackson couldn't quite control it. Had the right idea, but Jackson just couldn't hang on. It's Jackson, Woods, Phillips, Anderson, and Shane Bell in the lineup for the Colts. Greyhounds bring it the other way. They get it to Thompson, or actually Washington over there. Gives it to Sam Smith. Back up top to Allen. Long three-pointer in there. Caleb Allen with a three. Colts lead. Down to nine, 24-15. Right side, Colts have it. Corian Phillips gets it out to Shane Bell. Cameron Woods. Driving. Shot put up, pull up that time by Bell. Air ball picked up, tipped out around, and credit to Corey and Phillips for getting a hand in there. And the ball goes out of bounds, last touch by the Greyhounds. And the Colts will get it back. Looks like Leighton Jackson's gonna come out. Gonna see Cortez Collins in the lineup for the first time today. Collins, Woods, Anderson, Shane Bell. 
Malik Nash in the lineup for the Colts. Anderson tries to drive inside. Instead, gets it back out in the corner to DeCorian Phillips. Ball tipped around and picked up by Allen of the Greyhounds. He'll get it to J.T. Smith, and J.T. will run it into the front court. Colts up by nine. And Woods over there creating the problem, created the turnover. As Washington lost the handle, as Woods reached in, ball went out of bounds in front of the Colts bench. Cortez Collins comes out, Malik Nash back in. Nash with the basketball. Walks across the horse head at midcourt. Gets around the double team, deep in that left corner to Shane Bell. Bell gets it inside to Woods. Woods off the dribble, got his man in it around him and laid it up and in. Nice move by Cameron Woods. He's got four points in the ball game. On the other end, steal by DeCorian Phillips. Gets it off to Nash and here come the Colts. Cross court. DeCorian thought about the three and he's gonna be called for the travel. Didn't get that dribble down in time. Colts turn it back over again with 7.59 to go in this game. Colts on top by 11, 26-15. J.T. Smith at the free throw line. They'll kick it back over the left side. Allen thought about it, gets inside to Sam Smith. His turnaround one-hander good. Sam Smith with his first basket of the day. He's got four points in the ball game. Colts on top, 26-17. 7.34 to go in this first half. Shane Bell drives through the lane, pulls up, can't get that shot to go. Going up high to grab the rebound, Sham Smith. To JT Smith. And they look for Sam driving through, slams it home. Sam Smith with the basket, and credit Braxton McEwen with the assist. Colts coming the other way. As jump ball is a call, and the possession arrow pointing to the Colts. Smith able to tie up the basketball as Shane Bell was going up for the shot. Shane's going to come out, and Jordan Wright checks in. On the rotation, inbounds pass goes to Jordan Wright. He'll fire it out to Anderson. Anderson take another three in and out, no good. And the rebound's going to be pulled down by McEwen. 26-19, Colts on top by seven. Led by as many as 14 a moment ago. McEwen, deep in the left corner. J.T. Smith goes strong in the basket. It's to Sam Smith in traffic. Shot is blocked by Terry Anderson. Coming the other way, Malik Nash lays it up and in. Nash on the other end and going up to the shot. Shot is up and in. Sam Smith gets the basket and we'll see who they call the personal foul on. Foul is going to be on Jordan Wright. So Wright got the uh, personal foul. And head to the free throw line will be Sam Smith to try to complete the three-point play. He's got eight points in the ball game, two for two at the free throw line tonight. That went in and out and in and out. And Jordan comes down with the rebound. Jordan Nash, that is. All right, so Jordan Nash, Jordan Wright. Malik Nash with a basketball up top. Gets it to DeCorian Phillips on the right wing. DeCorian over to Nash. Colts on top by seven, 28-21. Corian Phillips working. Gets it back out front. Cameron Woods drives through the lane, puts it up, can't get it to go, and the rebound is gonna be pulled down by Tim Johnson. Johnson gets it to JT Smith. And the Colts set up defensively on top by seven, 28-21. Couple of powerhouses going head to head right here. Pass deep in that left corner, that's JT Smith. They get it back out to McEwen. To Johnson, right side. Shot put up, 16 footer, no, air ball. Pulled down by Jordan Wright. Good rebound by Jordan. And the Colts come the other way with it. To Anderson, Anderson couldn't quite control it. And the ball goes out of bounds, turnover Colts. It looks like uh, we're going to see checking into the lineup for the Colts will be Cameron Woods. 
So it's Anderson, Woods, Rice, Nash in the lineup for the Colts. And Bell, I should say. And on the left wing, cross court. Three pointer on the way, and it is no. Rebound McEwen tips it right back up and in. In the right place at the right time, that's Braxton McEwen. He's got four points in the ball game. Colts lead back to five, 28 23. Anderson saw a little bit of room in the lane, went up strong. And they're going to call a charge on Terry Anderson. Anderson called for a second personal foul. A lot of traffic under there. And let's see, Colts have six guys in the court. Okay, Jordan's coming out. Jordan Wright's coming out. So it's Nash, Phillips, Woods, Bell, and Anderson line up for the Colts. They lead it by five, 28-23. Just under five minutes to play in this first half. JT Smith gives it to Sam Smith, free throw line, up and in. That's money right there. That's 10 points for Smith. And the Colts have it now. Bounce pass up top. Phillips gets it right side to Bell, drives through the lane, hangs, kisses it off the glass and good. Shane Bell, nice move on the basket. He's got six points in the ball, seven points in the ball game. Colts lead it 30 to 25. Right side. Greyhounds with it. Outside the arc. They'll work it up top. They'll get it inside to Smith against Nash. Nash puts the pressure on, but let's see. A lane violation here, so the Colts are going to get it back. Well, actually, a charging foul. That's going to be on Smith. That'll be his second. Nash with a basketball. Here come the Colts. On top by 5, 30 to 25. Like uh, Sam is coming out of the lineup for the time being. Up top, that's Phillips. Phillips gets it over to Bell. Bell off the dribble, backs it up. 10 seconds on the shot clock. Try to find somebody open here. Get somebody open. Gets it to Nash. Oh, what a step by Nash. Went inside and a blocking foul. Oh, no, it's a jump ball is a call. Getting in there, getting a hand on the basketball. That's JT Smith. Good defense that time by Smith. First, I thought they were going to call a blocking foul. He managed to get behind that basketball up. Goats will set up the full court pressure here. With the basketball, that's Tim Johnson. Johnson gets it back over to JT Smith. JT directing some traffic out there. 335 to play in this first half. Colts on top by five, 30 to 25. Pass tipped around. Picked up by Terry Anderson. Anderson has it stripped away. And the uh Greyhounds come the other way. That's almost stolen away by Malik Nash, driving into the lane in the corner. Three-pointer on the way. No. And that rebound winds up in the stands. A lot of action right there. And the Colts get it back. 3-14 to play in the first half. Colts on top by five, 30 to 25. Malik Nash. Has it on the left wing. Gets it over to Anderson on the perimeter. As to Corian Phillips, breaks hard on the basket, puts it up, can't get it to go, gets his own rebound. Has a shot blocked, or did he? Be a whistle and a foul, and that is actually going to be on Jeremiah Jones. Jones called for his, personal, his first personal foul. End of the free throw line will be to Corian Phillips. Phillips with six points in the first half, all of them from beyond the arc. His first trip to the free throw line today. The only Colt that shot any free throws today has been Terry Anderson. He's three out of four. Phillips sends it on the way. Ouch. Front of the iron, no good. Shane Bell going to get a breather here. Cortez Collins checks in. At the line. Dorian Phillips takes his time. Shots on the way. This one rattles around and goes in. Phillips now with seven points. Colts extend that lead to six, 31 to 25. 2.45 to play in the first half. JT Smith gets it to McEwen. Pass underneath. 
Out of bounds, Jeremiah Jones. Looking for a man breaking on the basket and he had his back turned, didn't see it coming his way. T.J. Stewart just didn't get, didn't get a shot at that pass. Colts have it now, chance to extend that six point lead. Malik Nash gets it out front to DeCorian Phillips. Phillips right wing to Woods. Woods in the corner, it goes to Phillips. Pulls up, 14 footer, can't go. Rebound comes off to J.T. Smith. J.T. Sets the offense, tries the left side. Oh, what a pass by J.T. Smith underneath. McEwen knocks it down and he's fouled in the act of shooting. That's a nice pass by J.T. Smith through the lane that time. And that's gonna be on Cortez Collins. Tez picks up the personal foul, it's his first. And ahead to the free throw line will be Braxton McEwen. McEwen, by the way, six points in the ball game, two for two at the free throw line tonight. Has an opportunity to cut this Colt lead back to three. Shots on the way and it's good. 31-28 with 2.05 to play in the first half. Colts jumped out to about a 16 point lead at one point, a 14 point lead, but you knew this was gonna be a good matchup today. And that foul is gonna be called on Jeremiah Jones. That'll be his second. Jones and Sam Smith of the, of the uh, Greyhounds, each with two personal fouls. Anderson and Nash for the Colts with two personal fouls. Just under two minutes to play here in this first half. As Luke Wright checks in the lineup for the Colts in place of Cortez Collins. Nash gets it to Anderson. Anderson's been quiet lately. Couldn't get that shot to go. Tip in by Anderson won't go. Gets his own rebound. If at first you don't succeed, isn't that what they say? Anderson gets the basket. And the Colts back up by five, 33-28. Colts defensively, Nash was over there trying to get that rebound, but the rebound went out of bounds, apparently last touch by the Colts. Nash may have had a foot on the end line, we'll see. Crayhounds will make the inbounds fast. They'll get it into Allen. Allen. Dumps it off underneath the McEwen, working against Bright. Shot put up in the lane, reaching foul that may be on Woods. Yeah, Cameron called for getting a hand in there. By the way, that is Cameron's first personal foul. Heading to the free throw line to shoot a pair will be TJ Stewart. Stewart looking for his first points of the day. By the way, the uh, Greyhounds are now five out of 10 at the free throw line today. Shot on the way by Stewart is off the iron, no good. Second shot on the way, and it's off the front of the iron, no good. Anderson grabs the rebound for the Colts. Malik Nash with it in the backcourt, works it left side. Shane Vale will fire up the three, off the iron, no. Rebound, fought for, and let's see. Coming out of there with it will be JT uh, Smith, and then Anderson comes out the other way with it. Pass underneath, stolen by McEwen as Anderson was looking for Bride underneath. McEwen steals it away, J.T. Smith has it. He'll work it left side. Tim Johnson with the basketball. Johnson goes around McEwen's screen, fires it right side, Allen's three-pointer on the way, in and out, no good, and Anderson's there to grab the rebound. Colts have it back on top by five. 30 seconds to go in this first half. Colts have it right side. About a seven second clock differential here. Down underneath, oh, what a give that time by Anderson. Got it to Bright, Luke knocks it down. Give Anderson the assist, Luke Bright with a big basket right there. Colts on top by seven, 35-28. That's what makes Anderson so good. Always looking to make the right play. Shot on the way by Allen, up and in at the buzzer. It's a two, a fall away that time by Allen and that should Put an end to this first half of play. Caleb Allen with the basket at the buzzer. Makes it 35-30 at the intermission. Colts on top by five. We'll be back with some halftime stats coming for you in just a moment here on Ed88Radio.com. 
UA Casa Tot Colts merchandise is now available at the ERCs in DeQueen, Ashdown, and Nashville. Come on in and let our friendly staff show you around. We have a lot to choose from, including t-shirts in a variety of styles and colors, caps, hoodies, polos, long sleeve t-shirts. We have joggers and stuff like coffee mugs and insulated thermal tumblers, as well as flash drives, lanyards, and power bank chargers. Just let the staff know what you need, and who knows, they might even model it for you. Show your Casa Tot school spirit. Get your Colts merchandise today at an ERC near you. I lost my mind in the city of life. And the best street brings in the neon lights. When I heard the thunder, I could feel the rain. It's different At Diana's Clothing and Gifts on Culinary Drive in the Queen, shop a fantastic selection of women's fashion apparel. Keep your style fresh with the latest trendy tops, jeans, and dresses, plus lots of new arrivals. Let Diana's help you with your home decorating needs. Make your home even more personal with our assortment of home decor and decorative accessories. And discover our collection of gifts for that special person in your life. There are gifts for every occasion. It's a great family-owned business. People come from all over to visit Diana's, stay updated with the new stuff on their Facebook page. Located at 804 West Colinry Drive in DeQueen, Diana's Clothing and Gifts, 870-642-6528. It's halftime here where the Colts lead Mid-South by a score of 35-30. As the Colts led by as many as 14 in that first half, but uh, you knew Mid-South was going to come back, and there's a lot of basketball left. Oh, my goodness. 11 points in the first half for Terry Anderson to lead the way for the Colts. Seven points each for DeCorian Phillips and Shane Bell. Four points each for Malik Nash and Cameron Woods. And Luke Bright had a basket in that first half as well. For Mid-South, they're being led by Sam Smith with 10. And, of course, coming into this game, you knew their team leader was... Sam Smith, Colts, Terry Anderson, and at the half, yeah, you figured it would be a battle, and Anderson and Smith each leading the way. Anderson with 11, Smith with 10. Seven points in the first half for Braxton McEwen. Five points for Caleb Allen. Two points each for Jalen Anderson and Makai Washington and Christian Thompson for the Greyhounds. As far as foul situation is concerned, uh, both Smith and Anderson for the Greyhounds and the Colts, respectively, each with two personal fouls at the midway point. Uh, Jeremiah Jones with two for Mid-South, and it uh, looks like Malik Nash has two personal fouls for the Colts. So, really, nobody in any serious foul situation, uh, foul trouble at the present time, but not saying that won't come into play later on down the line, but uh, tell you what, one of the concerns coming into today's game for the Colts was the fact that they were without DeLon Dean. Dean is fourth in the country in number of made threes per ball game, averaging over three per game. Had six the other night down in Dallas when we took on Dallas Christian College, but uh, uh, unable to be with the team today. Without Dean, you knew you had to have somebody step up and hit some threes. Well, DeCorian Phillips hit a couple uh, in that first half, as did Terry Anderson for the Colts. So uh, there is somebody out there able to, to hit from the perimeter. We've seen Shane Bell hit some threes in the ball game in the past, and. Uh, uh, Shane's still trying to get back on track, back to what he was uh, uh, just prior to the holiday break, and he missed a couple of break, uh, games right there at the very start of uh, the resumption of the second half of the season. But uh, been back for a couple of games and starting to look like more and more like Shane Bell that we saw toward the end of that first half. Anyway, he finished the first half with seven points as the Colts lead it at the half by a score of 35-30. We'll take a break be back with more right after this on 888radio.com.
Come from all over to Bailey's Discount Building Supply in Dequeen because they help build the best for less. When you walk in the doors, you'll see everything from the do-it-yourselfer to the general contractor. They have warehouses stocked with doors and windows, wall paneling and flooring. At those big chain stores, you may be left by yourself to look for something all day. But at Bailey's, there's plenty of help. And of course, the lumber yard has everything from plywood to lumber and sheetrock to insulation. Inside, there's lining, plumbing parts, cabinets, cooking supplies, and even a cell on generators. Open Monday through Saturday in Dequeen. Bailey's Building Supply, 870-642-2851. We keep all the uh, the merchandise up here, don't we? I think we do, yeah. Let's just put them in there with that. We'll just put it out every time to where that reminds people. How's that? Okay, good, good. All right, good deal. We did, yeah. Just keep up with those and I'll get you a thing to put them in, okay? All right. I meant to do that. I'm sorry. All righty. Well, uh, just discussing with Wendy, what, what are we going to do with all the. Uh, all the cans we're receiving here in time for the uh, you know the big TV giveaway that we've got going on. See what has happened here is Gayla Urban donated a 50-inch television for us to give away uh, and help put some food in our UA Casatot food pantry. And so what we're doing is we're well we're you know we're taking in cans of food. And every time you give us a can or some non-perishable item for the food pantry, we give you a ticket to put into the drawing for the big screen TV that we'll give away on the day before the Super Bowl. And uh, anyway, that's coming up on, uh, I guess that'll be what, February 12th, Saturday, February 12th, during the UA Costa SAU Tech game, we'll have the drawing right here at the Bank of Locksburg Gymnasium, and you'll be able to watch and see if you wind up winning the TV. And uh, anyway, it's a way that we can help out our students. And there is a need in this day and age for food in each one of our food pantries, uh, pantries that is, on, on each one of our UA Costa campuses, between Ashdown and Nashville. And you can donate. You don't just donate here at the, uh, at the games, although we'll gladly take stuff at the games. But you can also give at each one of our campuses. Just bring those cans on in, and we'll get you signed up. And, Hopefully, you'll wind up winning a television, but I can guarantee that you're going to wind up helping out some needy families out there. We certainly do appreciate your help, all right? Anyway, it is halftime. Colts for, uh, leading at the half by a score of 35-30 over Mid-South. In the ladies' game earlier today, that game went the way of the Lady Greyhounds as uh, they remain undefeated in conference play, defeating the Lady Colts by a final score of 82-61. to and leading the way today was uh, Jayla Reed with uh, 20 points in the ball game for the Lady Greyhounds, including four three-pointers on the day. 17 points for Melina Williams, 13 points for Tashley Milo, and 11 points for Allen Davia Lockett. As again, ASU Mid-South remained undefeated in conference play, 3-0 on the season, 10-7 on, uh, uh, on the season. Meanwhile, Lady Colts, were led by Kyler Hardy, who had finished the night with 14 points, 12 points for Kayla Fuller. Lady Colts fall to 7-8 and eight on the season 0-4 in conference play. Well, both teams are back on the court right now, getting warmed up for the second half, and we'll be back with that second half in a moment on N88radio.com. Fender bender? Been bumped in the parking lot? Hit a deer? Well, the body shop at Queen Auto Group is known for their quality work. P.J. Miner and his crew of certified auto technicians have the equipment and the know-how to get you back on the road good as new. At the body shop at Queen Auto Group, not only do they do the work right, but they take great pride in getting your vehicle in and out of the shop as soon as possible. Cars, pickups, vans, SUVs, you name it, they can fix it. And they work with your insurance company too. So, getting your vehicle fixed is a very smooth process. Open weekdays from eight to five, it's the body shop at the Queen Auto Group. 35-30, Colts on top of ASU Mid-South. We get set for second half action. Colts will send out Malik Nash, Corian Phillips, Shane Bell, Terry Anderson, and Cameron Woods. Meanwhile, it'll be Sam Smith along with JT Smith in the starting lineup. 
along with Braxton McEwen, Jeremiah Jones, and Tim Johnson. Colts, Anderson steps back for three. Air ball, but chased down by the Colts, Shane Bell. Bell gets it to Woods. Woods, fall away, his shot won't go. The rebound comes off to Sam Smith. And with that, here come the Greyhounds. Underneath, shot put up on the baseline, up and in. Tim Johnson gets his first two points of the night, and it's a three-point lead for the Colts, 35-32. Phillips works it left side. Anderson goes through the lane, reverse shot, can't get it to go, and the rebound fought for goes out of bounds. Apparently last touch by Cameron Woods. J.T. Smith to Sam Smith. Left side. Jones underneath. Shot put up inside the lane by McEwen's up and good. Braxton with nine points in the ball game. It's a one point lead for the Colts. 35-34. Right side, that's Anderson. Anderson up top to Phillips. DeCorian drives through the lane, lays it up, bounces around, knocks it down. DeCorian now with nine points in the ball game. Broke that run of six straight points by Mid-South. They hit the last two of the first half, and the first four of the second half, and there's a three. Nice long three that time by Sam Smith. Sam gets the three. He's got 13 points in the ball game, and we're tied at 37. Right side, Phillips gets it to Woods, baseline, in traffic. Oh, nice behind the back pass. Tip back out of bounds, last touch. By the Greyhounds. Jordan Wright's getting checked to check in the lineup. Cameron Woods are coming out. Inbound pass to Bell. Bell spins inside the lane, goes up, hard off the glass, no good. The rebound's tipped out, picked up by the Greyhounds. And they'll have a chance to take their first lead in a long time. Long three-pointer on the way by McEwen knocks it down. Braxton McEwen with a three. Colts find themselves down 40-37. 17-40 to play in the ball game. Malik Nash off the dribble. Tries to pass through the lane. JT Smith steals it, goes all the way. Lays it off the glass and good. Big defensive play that time by JT. That's his first two of the night. Colts down by five, 45-37. Gorian Phillips across the midcourt stride, deep in the corner, Nash goes baseline, in the corner. That's Bell, right side, Phillips will fire up the three, in there. The Corian Phillips knocks down the three timeout on the court. 17-11 to play in the ball game. Colts trail at 42-40, back in a moment. Salinas Satellite Service in Dequeen is a corporate partner of Ed88. Salinas is a Southwest Arkansas Dish Network provider offering all the latest package deals. And if you should encounter a problem, Salinas experienced service technicians are just a phone call away. The very latest in Dish Network home entertainment equipment can be found at Salinas Satellite in downtown Dequeen. Thanks to Selena Satellite, your Dish Network provider in the Queen for doing what they do to help us do what we do. Yes. Colts trail at 42-40 after that timeout. The Colts will have Jordan Wright, Malik Nash, Corey Phillips, Terry Anderson, and Shane Bell in the lineup. McEwen has it left side, gets it to JT Smith, working down low. Bell defensively. Three-pointer on the way for the left side. In and out, no good. The rebound comes off to DeCorian Phillips. Colts have it with a chance to tie it up or take the lead with a long one here. All the way, Nash lays it up and in from the right-hand side. What a quick, explosive move on the basket. Nash has six. We're tied at 42. Pass underneath, out of bounds. Sam Smith tied up underneath. Couldn't get free, couldn't get to the basket. And the ball comes over to the Colts. 
Phillips will walk it across the horse head. Has the ball tipped away momentarily by Smith. Jordan Wright gets it to Anderson inside the lane. Thought about the shot, but he's got Sam Smith in his face, and that's going to be a lane violation on Anderson. Anderson got in there and couldn't get back out again. 42-42. J.T. Smith with a basketball for the Greyhounds. Bell will put the pressure on. They'll work it left side. Driving the lane, shot put up, reverse layup up and in. Nice move on the basket by Jeremiah Jones, his first two of the night. Colts trail by two, 42-40, 44-42, I should say. Bell bounce pass inside. Anderson working against Smith, can't get it to go. McEwen grabs that rebound. Pass down low. They'll get it out on the right side. Three-pointer on the way, no. Rebounds pulled down by Anderson. Had to get over the top of Smith and pass by Anderson. My bell couldn't quite come up with it. And the ball goes out of bounds in front of the scorer's table. Pass to Sam Smith. Goes inside the lane, shots up and in, and Jordan Wright's going to be called for the personal foul. Smith knocks it down. He's got 15 points in the ball game, and he's going to the free throw line. Jordan Wright picks up his second personal foul. And at the free throw line will be Sam Smith. He's two out of three at the free throw line tonight. He's got 15 points in the ball game. Five of them here nearly going into the second half. Check their shots on the way. No, rebound comes off to DeCorian Phillips. And the Colts will come the other way with it. In the corner, that's Nash, gives it right back to DeCorian for three. Off the iron, no. Fight for the rebound underneath, that was Nash, had it momentarily. And the Colts are gonna get it back. They may have got a break right there. Like Anderson and Nash were both there. I think Sam Smith was there as well. They're gonna rule it went off to Sam's fingertips. Colts will have it on the baseline. Inbounds pass, goes out to Anderson, thought about the three, instead steps in, goes hard to the basket, lays it up and in. Anderson with his first two of the second half. He's got 13 points in the ball game. Colts cut it to two, 46-44. Out beyond the arc. Up top, Sam Smith gets it to McEwen. JT Smith with it. JT calls for a screen by McEwen. Now they'll get it to Sam Smith. Eight seconds on the shot clock, stolen away. Anderson comes the other way with it for the Colts. Drives through the lane, lays it up and in. Anderson with the steal and the basket. And the Colts tie it up at 46. 14 and a half minutes to go in the ball game. Sam Smith has the ball almost stolen away. And what are they going to call? Is it going to be a jump? They call a timeout. Is it a foul? We'll see. They're going to sort it out right here. But the longer it goes in a scrum like that, the more chances you take. The thing's getting a little heated or possibly somebody getting hurt. They're going to call a personal foul on Shane Bell. Bell called for the personal foul. Wow. Luke Bright's in the lineup for the Colts. Inbounds pass to J.T. Smith. Fresh 20 on that shot clock after that foul. Pass underneath. And going up strong to the basket, laying it up and in. was Tim Johnson. He's having to work against Cameron Woods that time. Managed to make it work. Now I said Cameron Woods, Cameron's not even in there. Nash gives it to Corian Phillips. Phillips to Anderson, working against Smith underneath in traffic, goes up strong, can't get it to go. McEwen grabs the rebound. Greyhounds have the basketball in the lead, 48-46. Just under 14 minutes to go in the game. Oh, what a pass underneath. And to Corian Phillips gonna be called for goaltending. But Caleb Allen gets the basket. Great pass underneath. Is that McEwen made that pass? That's beautiful. McEwen's coming out of the lineup, checking in at his place. Will be JT uh, TJ Stewart. Shane Bell's going to come out for the Colts. So it's Nash and Woods, Phillips. 
Wright and Anderson in the lineup for the Colts. They trail at 50 to 46. Anderson gets it out to Bright. Left side it goes to Nash. Malik into the hands of DeCorey and Phillips. He'll back it out. 12 seconds on the shot clock. Right side it goes to Bright. Bright cross courts it to Nash. Nash drives through the lane. Lays it up and in. Malik Nash. I could be president of his fan club. He's got eight points in the ball game. Mid-South on top, 50 to 48. JT Smith works it right side to Allen. Caleb Allen backs it back out. Pass tipped away, picked out of the air by Nash. Nash coming the other way. And the ball's picked away by the Greyhounds. Taking it all the way, slamming it home. Tim Johnson, six points in the ball game. Exclamation point. Underneath, Woods. Can't get the shot to go, but he's fouled in the act of shooting. Cameron Woods will head to the charity stripe. He's got four points in the ball game. This will be his first trip to the free throw line tonight. Personal foul is going to be called against J.T. Smith. At the free throw line, shot will not go by Woods. Colts on the day. Four out of seven at the charity strike. Colts trail by four, 52-48, second shots up and in. Woods now with five points in the ball game. That's his first point of the second half. Shane Bell will pick up the pressure in the backcourt. 52-49, 12 and a half minutes to play in the game. That's Allen. Gets, has his pass stolen away by Anderson, goes all the way, whoa! Wow. Anderson caught in the air. Feet taken out from under him. And they're going to call the personal foul on uh, TJ Stewart. Stewart called for the personal. Anderson's going to the free throw line. Uh, officials going to talk it over here. Want to make sure it wasn't a flagrant foul. That was scary right there. It will not be a flagrant foul. Not sure. It was in traffic, yes. And it was a scary, it was scary, but it was not flagrant. So Anderson's going to the free throw line to shoot a couple right here. First one's up and in. I'm telling you, you take a spill like that, that they ought to give you eight free throws. That was scary. Coming out of the lineup will be TJ Stewart. Stewart was not going to give up that easy layup. Anderson can cut it to one right here. That one's on the way and it's in. Anderson with 17 points in the ball game and the Colts have cut it to one, 52 to 51. 12, 15 to go in the game. Up top, Bell putting pressure on the basketball. Crowd is getting loud, nice move on the basket, shot no good, but there's Smith with a tip in. Sam Smith, 17 points in the ball game. Colts have it, right wing, down by three, 54-51. What an atmosphere, this place is rocking. Both teams making some noise tonight. We got a whistle on across the way, that's gonna be on Jalen Anderson, that's his first. Get a brand new 20 on the shot clock here. Now what, are they trying to say there's some uh, blood on the uh, uniform of Terry Anderson? So we're gonna get, uh, Anderson's running to, uh, he's trying to clean that off there. So he took a big, I don't know if that's connected with that spill he took a moment ago on that foul. But we've got a timeout on the court. Mid-South, 51, Colts 50, uh, 54, and the Colts 51. 11.48 to play in the ball game. We're back in a moment here on ed88radio.com. Southwest Arkansas's Work Boot Center is right here in Dequeen at Shoe Depot. 
Work boots from Caterpillar, Timberland Pro, Red Wing, Rocky, Justin, Thoroughgood, Muck, Ariad, Georgia, Boggs, Irish Setter, and Wolverine. Ariad Master Grip and Rebar Boots, your choice, only $99.99. Name brand jeans. Since jeans are 25% off. Shoes for the entire family at Shoe Depot, open Monday through Saturday to the Queen. You say what you want to about John Munyard. That man plays some good tunes at the ball game, huh? Yes, he does. Best music you're gonna find anywhere when you're on the road. You betcha. Little Tony Joe White, some pork salad Annie. You don't get much Southern than that, huh? I, I don't care if you root for the Colts or if you root for uh, the Greyhounds. Chances are you probably had some post salad once upon a time. And it was good, right? Like mine with some scrambled eggs myself. 11.48 to go in the ball game. We're set to go again. Colts trailing by three, 54-51, as Nash gets it into Phillips. Joined in the lineup by Terry Anderson, along with Shane Bell and Cameron Woods. Anderson has the ball up top. Managed to catch back up with it. Out to Phillips for three, won't go, rebound. Woods went sky high to get that rebound. And he had it tipped out of bounds, out of his hands. Getting in there to make that play was, uh, I don't know who was that, it was number 30. Tristan Thompson, pass underneath Anderson. Can't get it to go, gets his own rebound. That shot, not blocked. Whistle was a little bit late, but that's, that's the right call there. And the personal foul is gonna be called against O.J. Mars and the Colts uh, will head to the free throw line. Mars second personal foul, Anderson's going to the free throw line. Shots on the wing, good. Anderson so far today, six out of seven at the free throw line. 18 points in the ball game. Second shot will not go and that rebound is gonna be pulled down by the Greyhounds, they lead by two, 54, 52. Left side, Allen has it. He'll get it out front, into the hands of Jalen Anderson. Jalen has the basketball, working in front of Terry Anderson. Jalen works it right side. Three seconds on the shot clock, long three-pointer on the way, in there! Back breaker that time by Jalen Anderson. It's a five point lead now for the Greyhounds. Woods has it up top, drives into the lane, gets it right side. Let's see, a reaching foul is going to be called. Personal foul is going to be called against Christian Thompson. That's his first. Colts will have it on the baseline. Phillips will trigger the inbounds pass. Gets it in to Bell, and Bell apparently had it tipped out of bounds, getting a hand in there on it, was Jalen Anderson. And let's see. Coming out of the lineup will be Tim Johnson. Checking in in his place will be Makai Washington. Washington in for Johnson. Colts inbounds pass. They'll get it way out to Terry Anderson. Five-point lead right now. Four, Mid-South is that pass. Anderson was trying to get it around the defender. O.J. Mars got a piece of the body on it, got the ball out of bounds, 14 seconds on the shot clock. As Anderson will make the inbounds pass across the way. Colts set up the uh, inbounds play. They'll get it to Nash. Shot clock down to a dozen. Right side, driving into the lane, that's Nash. Nowhere to go, needs to get it to somebody. Gets it to Woods, out front it goes, long three-pointer by Bell, ooh, air ball. <laughs> 10 15 to play in the ball game, wait a minute. Okay, the Colts are setting up full court pressure. I looked up, and we still hadn't got the ball in play yet, but they, uh, the Colts had set up the full court pressure. Greyhounds wanted to go a different route. Coming back the other way underneath, shot put up underneath, no. Is this on Woods or Bell? We'll see. 
First, the foul is going to be on Shane Bell. Shane, call for a second. Heading to the free throw line will be big Christian Thompson. Thompson's first trip to the charity stripe tonight. He's got two points in the ball game. Shots on the way, and it's good. 58-52, Colts down by a half dozen with 10 away to play in the ball game. Thompson's second shot is up and in. He's got four points. Colts down by seven. 59-52, biggest lead of the night for Mid-South. Colts led by as many as a dozen in that first half. Or was it 14? Right wing, Colts have it. Corian Phillips, baseline, in the corner, three-pointer on the way, is an air ball, and Anderson's gonna be called for being over the back on the rebound attempt. That's the third personal foul on Terry. And Mid-South will set up, face the full court pressure here, as Cortez Collins checks in, Malik Nash gonna get a breather. It's Collins, Woods, Phillips, Anderson and Bell in the lineup for the Colts. Left side. Up top with the basketball. That's going to be Anderson. Anderson gets around. Gets around Bell. They're working deep in that right corner. At the free throw line. Anderson in the lane. Somebody got, somebody got, maybe may have been two or three people got a piece of him right there. We'll see. And that's going to be on Cortez Collins. They'll give it to the guy that's the easiest to spot in that bunch right there. That's big old Cortez. Six foot nine. Out of Vivian, Louisiana. Heading to the free throw line. Will be Jalen Anderson for the Greyhounds. First trip to the free throw line tonight. And that one's off the side of the iron. Will not go. Anderson with five points in the ball game, including a three-pointer here in the second half. 59-52, Colts down by seven. Still 9.22 to go in this ball game. Second shot's on the way, and it's good. Colts have it now, trailing by eight, 60 to 52. Shane Bell brings it across the timeline, gets it to Anderson, back to Bell. Bell wants to work. Good defense that time by Allen. Three-pointer on the way by Anderson. Off the iron. And the rebound fought for. Coming down with it will be Thompson. Christian gets it ahead to Jalen Anderson. Jalen backs it out. Working against Shane Bell. Bell forces it into the backcourt. And let's see, that will be a foul on Shane Bell. Gave an extra bump that time. And with that, Shane Bell's picked up his third personal foul. Both Anderson, Terry Anderson, and Shane Bell with three personal fouls right now for the Colts. Looks like Jordan Wright's going to check in. Corian Phillips is going to get a breather. So Jordan Wright in the lineup now for the Colts. Right side, mid-south, up top. Allen's three, in and out, no. There's Cortez Collins, grab that rebound. Fires it ahead to Bell. Bell. In the lane, loose ball, let's see. There's gonna be a foul underneath. The personal foul is gonna be whistled against Caleb Allen of the Greyhounds. And the Colts will have it underneath their own basket. Trailing 60 to 52 with 8.35 to go in the game. Could use a basket this time down. They get it to Anderson. Terry sizes up the defense and has the ball stripped away. Shot put up and in by Tristan Thompson. He got the steal and he got the basket. It's a 10 point lead for Mid South. That's a big basket right there. And we got a timeout on the court. 8.09 to play in the ball game. Colts down by 10. We're back in a moment on ed88radio.com. When you order a quarter pounder with cheese, you're committing your uninterrupted attention to a quarter pound of fresh beef. It's the world's best tasting. Do not disturb sign. Ba -da -ba -ba -ba.
Did you hear that? The State Farm thing. Dun -dun 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 -dun. I think we're in a commercial. Jake from State Farm, I knew it. Don't worry, Chris. Things are gonna go surprisingly great. Dad, look! Chris, no! Ooh, see? Surprising. Just like State Farm surprisingly great rates. I, w I didn't even record. Like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. In DeQueen, your State Farm insurance agent is Luke Billingsley at 870-642-2157. Mid-South leads the Colts by a score of 62 to 52. Colts were up by five at the intermission, but it's been a spirited performance here in the second half by this Mid-South group. Colts will break the uh, timeout with uh, Cameron Woods, Corey Phillips, Terry Anderson, Shane Bell, and Malik Nash, the original starting five. Nash will make the inbounds pass, and he'll get it into to Corey and Phillips. Eight minutes to go in the ball game pass to Bell. Bell breaks down the defense on the left side, drives in, lays it off the glass and in. Bell with nine points in the ball game. Big play that time by the Colts. At the free throw line, shot on the way off the back of the iron. Rebound comes off to Anderson. Anderson has it tipped away, chases it down, and the Colts have come on. Corian Phillips up top. Works it left side to Anderson. Gets it over to Woods. Woods wants to go inside. And we're going to have a whistle and a foul, a reaching foul. It's going to be on Allen, I think. Tried to get in there, tie up that basketball. Sometimes you get that call, sometimes you don't. Allen did not get it that time. And Woods will go to the free throw line. Sam Smith comes in the lineup for the Greyhounds. Give me Cameron Woods at the free throw line, shoot the one and one. Colts down by eight, 62 to 54. Woods at the free throw line. Shot in and out, no good. Woods one out of three at the free throw line today. He's got five points in the ball game. Colts will put some pressure on the basketball. Trailing 62 to 54. At the free throw line, give underneath. Oh, nice dish that time. From OJ Mars to Mikhail Washington. Mikhail gets the uh, basket. Three pointer on the way by DeCorey and Phillips won't go. And that rebound's gonna be picked up. Coming the other way, shot put up and in by Jalen Anderson. And we've got a whistle on the court right here as Colts will have the basketball. Down by four, uh, six, no, 12. Okay, all right, 66-54. Anderson has it for the Colts. Terry gets it off to DeCorey and Phillips and he's gonna be called for the travel. Got his feet tangled up, couldn't get that shot off, and the Colts will turn it over. 66-54, Colts will set up the full court pressure here. As the inbounds pass will be triggered by Mercai Washington. Washington to Anderson, Jalen Anderson working against Cameron Woods. Jalen spins up top. Jane Bell on the switch. Bounce pass inside. Shot put up and off the glass and good. Nice basket that time by O.J. Mars. Colts find themselves down by 14, 68-54. And they have it stripped away again. Greyhounds really getting in the heads of the Colts right now. Loose ball on the court is going to be picked up by Bell. Bell comes the other way with it, lays it up and in. Shane Bell with the steal, goes coast to coast. But quickly, Greyhounds come the other way, loose ball, it's a charging foul. Gonna be called against Allen. Caleb Allen called for his third personal foul. I think it was Shane Bell took that, uh, took that collision right there. So Bell will make the inbounds pass. Colts down by a dozen, 68 to 56. Each team is led by as many as 14 today. Nash works it left side to Bell. Shane kicks it up top to Terry Anderson, right side to Malik Nash. 
Nash gets it out to Woods, to Anderson at the free throw line. That's to Corey and Phillips. Phillips backs it back out. 10 seconds on the shot clock. Loose ball on the court. Picked up. Woods pulls up from eight feet. Can't get that shot to go. The tip in, tipped around. And let's see, is that going to be Nash? Is it going to be a jump ball? What's, what are they calling here? And they're going to call the personal foul on Malik Nash. Reaching in on that scrum. Third personal foul on Nash. Heading the other way to go to the free throw line. Will be O.J. Mars. Mars hasn't been to the free throw line tonight. Got two points in the ball game, both of those here in the second half. Colts down 68-56, five and a half minutes play in the ball game. OJ at the free throw line, shots up and in. Mars with three points in the ball game. Got another one coming here. Second shot by Mars is on the way and it's off the side of the iron. Rebound picked up by Smith and put right back in. Boy, that's a big play right there on the part of the big guy. Colts down by 15, 71 to 56. On the baseline, Bell chases down that, that pass in the right corner. Fires it on the way, can't get it to go in the rebound, pulled down by Smith. Sam has the basketball. He'll get it to J.T. Smith. Colts find themselves down by 15 with only five minutes to go in the ball game. Pass underneath, shot up and in. Nice pass, Makai Washington, six points in the ball game. Colts down by 17, we've got a timeout on the court. 4.52 to play in the ball game, our score. It's Mid-South, 73, Colts 56, back in a moment. On NADA Radio. Wade Cassatot, physical therapist assistant and occupational therapy assistant programs in Ashdown are designed to give our students the skills needed to be job ready in only 30 months. At UA Cassatot, our instructors are knowledgeable and experienced. Our classes are affordable and small, and our facilities are big and well equipped. And you'll find our graduates on the job all over the four states area. And that's something to celebrate. Application deadline is March 1st. UA Cassatot, your career starts here. We thank our UA Costot OTA students today for doing what they do at the ball game. Working the concession stand, working the camera for today's broadcast, by the way. Great big thank you to uh, Allie Tucker, UA Costot OTA program, for helping out. I wish you could find a few more points for the Colts on that film right there. Colts down 73 56, 17 points. It's been a big turnaround in the second half as uh, Mid-South was down by five at the intermission. Colts will have the basketball to resume action here with 4.52 after that timeout. They'll break the uh, timeout with Malik Nash, along with Shane Bell, DeCorian Phillips, Terry Anderson, and Luke Bright in the lineup. Bell on the right wing. Gets it off to Phillips. Phillips will back it out. Gets it in the corner, driving the lane. Bell can't get the shot to go. There's Anderson with the rebound. Puts it right back up and in. Colts cut it back to 15, 73, 58. Still some time here, four and a half minutes to go in the ball game. Colts have to get a stop or two. Bright comes up on the basketball, lob inside. Smith working against Phillips, has the ball stripped away and a whistle and foul. Will that be Anderson or will that be DeCorian? That's gonna be on DeCorian Phillips. Phillips called for the second personal foul. Sam Smith going back to the free throw line. Big guy today with 19 points in the ball game. He's two out of four at the free throw line. 10 points in the first half. Nine here in the second half. They'll have a chance for a couple more right there. That shot's on the win is good. Sam comes in. Well, he's uh, exceeded his average of 19.6 per game. He knocked that one down. He'll have another one coming here. Second shot. Off the back of the iron. Going high to grab that rebound is to Corian Phillips. Colts come the other way. Anderson. Gets it over to Phillips. Phillips inside the lane, off the dribble, out to Bright. Bright gets it right back over to Woods. Excuse me, to Phillips. Phillips off the dribble, off his foot, over to Bell. Bell 
Gets the uh, pressure, fires it out. Three-pointer on the way by Phillips. Off the iron, no good. The rebound's chased down by Malik Nash. Nash grabs the rebound and the Colts have it. Shot on the way by Bell. Three-pointer won't go and the rebound goes out of bounds off the fingertips of Terry Anderson. And Mid-South will have the basketball. Leading 74-58. Luke Bright's going to come out. Cameron Woods got a quick breather. He's right back in again. 74-58. Colts down by 16. 3.45 to play in the ball game. J.T. Smith works it ahead to Washington. Makai gets it back over to J.T. J.T. working against Shane Bell. One on one. No, really, it is. Two number ones going head to head there. Working right side through the lane. Nice give on the baseline. Shot put up and in. As Johnson found his teammate, O.J. Mars, for the basket. Colts on the other end. Layup by DeCorian Phillips is up and good. Phillips now with 14 points in the ball game. And the Colts trailed by 16, 76-60. Three minutes to go in the game. Washington with it. He'll get it off in the hands of O.J. Mars. Mars to Washington. Washington looking underneath to Sam Smith. And I think reaching in that time was Malik Nash. Nash has been called for his fourth personal foul. And it looks like uh, Malik Nash, along with Cameron Woods, are going to come out. Jordan Wright and Leighton Jackson check in. So it's Jackson, Wright, Anderson, along with Shane Bell, and DeCorian Phillips in the lineup. Sam Smith at the free throw line, knocks it down. Smith on the day, 21 points. Four out of seven, it's a charity stripe. Make it four out of eight as that was no good. Leighton Jackson going high to get that rebound. He's going to be fouled over the back. And a personal foul is going to be whistled against Makai Washington. Jackson got there for that rebound. And will walk to the other end. Jackson's going to get a chance to get the scoring column today. Pull the Colts a little bit closer, down by 17. Shoot the one and one here. Right, is on the way. In and there. Leighton Jackson. His first point of the night. One of our student ambassadors at a Pleasant Grove High School in Texas. Can a second shot's up and in for Leighton. 77 62, 240 to play in the game. Anderson still puts some pressure on the basketball. Colts down by 15. Pass in the corner, three-pointer on the way by Washington, no good. There's the Corey and Phillips to grab that rebound. Colts coming the other way to Anderson. Anderson, reverse jam that time. Colts now cut it to 13, 77-64. The 2.15 to play in the game. J.T. Smith works it back out on the right side. Into the hands. Underneath, shot put up and in by Sam Smith. Smith with a basket. 23 points in the ball game for Big Sam. 79-64. Driving the lane, laying it up with a hand. Well, it's got to be goaltending, and it will be. So you give Shane Bell the basket. Bell on the day. Got 13 points in the ball game today. Down to a minute 47 to play in this one. Colts down by 13. Out on the left side. That's Johnson. Johnson double team. Trapped out there. Sam Smith. Oh, nice give on the baseline. Shot put up and in by O.J. Mars. Mars with seven points in the ball game. All up here in the second half. Colts again trailing by 15. 81-66. Corian Phillips gets it out to Jordan Wright. Over to Anderson. Anderson fires it left side to Jackson. Jackson to Phillips. Phillips will fire up the three. That's an air ball. 
that's going to be hauled down by JT Smith. Down to about a minute to play in this one. And Mid-South looks to remain undefeated in conference play. Does that pass out of bounds? On the baseline, Colts will get it. Trailing 81-66. Under a minute to go as Anderson has it out on the court. Steps back for the three. In and out, no good. There's Leighton Jackson with a rebound. Gets it off to Shane Bell. Bell in traffic. Turn around, puts it up and in. Bell with a basket. Sam Smith at the free throw line, kicks it in the corner. Allen has it. He'll fire it back inside to Sam. Sam, nice give on the baseline, always looking for the open guy. And that guy at that time was O.J. Mars. He's got nine points in the ball game. Give Sam Smith the assist. 83-68, Colts now by 15. Nice give underneath. Jordan Wright puts it up and in. Give Anderson, Terry Anderson the assist. Give Jordan Wright the basket. That's his first two of the day. And the Colts down 83-70. Pass out front, tipped away, picked up by Anderson. He'll take it all the way, lay it up and in. Anderson with the steal and the basket. And the Colts will finish the night on the short end of the scoreboard, 83-72. to 72. And we'll be back to wrap it up with some final stats in a moment on ed88radio.com. We make sit-down chicken, stand-up chicken, backyard chicken, oops chicken, lots of time chicken, no time chicken. If there's one thing we know, it's chicken, chicken, and chicken. More choices, more wow, more to love. Tyson. All right, we may just go ahead. Yeah, go ahead and let's see if we can put that on the folks over here, maybe. There we go. There we go. Yeah, that'll work. You too now. Thanks a lot. Did you hear that? The State Farm thing. Dun -dun -dun -dun. I think we're in a commercial. Jake from State Farm, I knew it. Don't worry, Chris, things are gonna go surprisingly great. Dad, look! Chris, no! Ooh, see, surprising. Just like State Farm's surprisingly great rates. I, w I didn't even record. Like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. In Dequeen, your State Farm insurance agent is Luke Billingsley at 870-642-2157. Wilkerson Funeral Home was established by the Wilkerson family in 1929. Fred Wilkerson Sr. built a reputation on serving others, putting families first, and operating with the highest standards of professionalism. With locations in Dequeen and Dirks, families of Southwest Arkansas continue to choose Wilkerson Funeral Home for their dependability, professionalism, and a staff that has acquired over 125 years of combined experience in the funeral business. Supporting our community and area schools, Wilkerson Funeral Home, and online at wilkersonfuneralhomes.com. Look at where we are. Think of what we can do. What we're building together is special, and at Southwestern Electric Power Company, we know it's only the beginning. We can do more to improve our communities, our lives. We can reimagine how we use power and where that power comes from. We believe every person, no matter how unique, makes us stronger. By working together, the energy to accomplish our dreams is boundless. Final score. It was ASU Mid-South over UA Cost. Tied by a score of 83 to 72. As Colts led by five at the half, but uh, it, was, uh, it was a different team we saw in that second half. As, uh, ASU Mid-South came out and, and looked super sharp and uh, certainly looked to be one of the favorites in the conference. As, uh, they've had a couple of big wins under their belts already, including wins over uh, uh, National Park and UA Costa in that final 83-72. As leading the way for ASU Mid-South 
was their big guy, Sam Smith. You expect him to get 20-something points tonight, and he, he got 23 tonight. And he wasn't alone in that lineup. Uh, and a lot of the times that other people were scoring, it was Sam that was finding somebody open, getting the ball in their hands. It was uh, Braden McEwen with 12 points, nine points in the ball game tonight for O.J. Morris, all of those in the second half. Look like uh, eight points in the ball game for Jalen Anderson, seven points for Kalen Allen, six points each for Tim Johnson and Makai Washington. Six points for Christian Thompson, and rounding out the scoring uh, with two points for Jeremiah Jones and J.T. Smith. Meanwhile, for the Colts, they were led by uh, the uh, NJCAA Division II Player of the Week last week, Terry Anderson. He wound up tonight with 24 points. Also figuring in the scoring tonight for the Colts was uh, uh, Shea Bell. He finished the night with 15, his best performance in the second half of the season. 14 points for DeCorian Phillips. Uh, eight points tonight for Malik Nash. Five points for Cameron Woods. And two points each for Luke Wright, Jordan Wright, and Leighton Jackson. So the uh, Colts now fall to uh, uh, 12 and 6 on the season. Two and two in conference play. Six and two at home, and their two-game winning streak is, is is gone. While the ASU Mid-South team, they now even their record at seven and seven, and more importantly, they go to three and zero oh in conference play. Now the uh, uh, also tonight it was ASU winning the ladies' game by a score of uh, eighty-two to sixty-one. A big night for Jay Lareen with twenty. 17 points for Melina Williams, 13 points for Tashley Milo, 11 points for uh, Alan, Dea, uh, Alan Davia Lockett. Meanwhile, the Lady Colts were led by Kyler Hardy with 14 and 12 for Kayla Fuller, 10 points for Ashley Starks. Now the Colts and Lady Colts, next time out for them, um, we right back at it again on uh, Wednesday of this week as we'll be heading up to Williams Baptist University take on uh, their JV team in men's and women's action. The ladies will play at five, the men at seven. Our next conference game will be next Saturday in Hot Springs at National Park College. So again, final score, uh, the uh, Colts come up on the short end of the scoreboard. Final score, 83-72, ASU Mid-South. Well, for uh, all of us at 88, uh, including our uh, camera operator tonight, and uh, we'll certainly want to thank the uh, OTA program here at UA Casa Todd for providing a camera operator. Lots of our concession stand workers, a lot of volunteers out of that bunch. Yeah, Allie Tucker, thanks for all you did today. And thank you for tuning in. And uh, hopefully we'll get together next time here on ed88radio.com.